Hey, hey, what's up? What's going on? All welcome to episode 33 of Buckshot with your host, Tom O'Mahony. 48th. Jesus Christ, I couldn't even rack up the fucking thought in my head. For the 8th of November, no, November 2017. Jesus. Get it together, Tom. Holy shit. I think the cold is getting to me. Has the cold hit everybody, has it? If you're not in Ireland, we're not used to this. We like our middle of the road temperatures. Piss and rain, but keep it about 10 degrees and we're happy. The fire has started. You can probably hear the fire in the background. It's all crackly and whatnot. Not worth the fuck. The cold I'm after getting, honest to God, I'm as well have fucked. <laughs> I may as well got out and dug up a couple of stones and fucked them into the fire. Oh, they caught me by the balls. Special, it's on special, Tom. There's two euros off. Go on, have it. No wonder it's two euros off. Jesus Christ, they could have given it to me for free. What a piece of shit. You think being a fucking an old country fella, I'd know better. I'd know fucking better to, to buy some shit with some Irish fella's name written on the bag. Do you know what I mean? Seamus Ryan's, you know. Fucking hell, what's wrong with me? <laughs> ah, well, you live and learn. You don't get to have too many fires nowadays. Especially not when you you live in urban spots. A lot of places are like, nah, not happening. No, not happening. It's fucking, you can either have gas, electricity, or maybe oil. But this, this spot we're in now has a couple of fireplaces. So we may as well make do. And plus, Storm Ophelia gifted us a couple of beautiful trees, so... Why fucking not? You're all very welcome. Thank you very much for tuning in, downloading, streaming, whatever you're doing. If this is your first time, feel free to uh, whatever platform you've listened to it on. Obviously, we're on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all the usual ones. I think we're over. We're moving to to Spreaker, I think. Listen to me, huh? Like I know what I'm fucking talking about. Spreaker. No, uh, uh, Gordon is putting the finishing touches to the website this week. He's... Uh, he sent me over a couple of bits of... I'd, I'd like to pretend I know what I'm looking at. I'd lo- Like, in all fairness, the man fair knows what he's talking about. So, I realistically, he could... He doesn't need to ask my opinion on anything. That's the God's honest truth. That's how much faith I have, or lack of faith I have in my own ability to know what I'm fucking looking at when it comes to anything website So, I've no doubt uh, it's going to be... But apparently, we're, the SoundCloud is on the way out. I didn't know this. I could be shooting myself in the foot, but Gordon was saying that SoundCloud is kind of on the way out the door and Spreaker is where to move to. I think it's Spreaker. Spreaker? Fuck, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Anyway, you're all very welcome. Subscribe. That's that's the bottom line of subscribe. To follow, just follow me, Tom O'Mahony, Tom O'Mahony Comic on... Uh, Tom O'Mahony Comedy, actually, on Facebook. Tom O'Mahony Comedy on Instagram. And Tom Beer O'Mahony on Chatty Snaps. You need to send me an email of any sorts. Because why not? Fucking why not send me an email? Say, hey, how's it going? Be a bit old school. A bit um, a bit more fucking, I suppose, formal, isn't it, these days, to send an email rather than just a text or a, a WhatsApp or whatever, or chatty snaps. Although I don't mind. You can send it on the fucking stable to the top of a dog's head for all I care. Just get in contact. I'm lonely. No. <laughs> I probably fucking am I don't even know but yeah send it to buckshotpod at gmail uh, buckshotpodcast sorry at gmail if uh, the old twitter handle is buckshotpod my twitter handle is tom underscore omani fucking hell right that's everything that's enough that's enough L- listen if you found this you've already found me this is the thing I'm trying to tell you it's not that difficult I'll put the links in underneath but realistically it's tom omani comedy you'll find me in google most places I show up um yeah, the tickets are selling nicely for the for both shows. Um, there's the Tala one is about two thirds of the way sold, as far as I know, and the London one has already shifted. I think about half. I think the way they were talking, I don't fully know the capacity there, but I, I think about half. It'd be great to see you there, but at least now we know we have a show. At least we know we have a show. Anyway, that's the main thing. I know a few people have made contact and said they're going or going to send friends or whatever. Some people are coming from Bristol and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's all that shit out of the way. So, oh yeah, well, that's that's the, the English one. The Museum of Comedy one is November 25th, if you're looking for it. Uh, I'll put in the, the ticket link in the old uh, description. And the 17th is the one in Tala of Buckshot jeez I'm all over the shop aren't I apologies for that I'll get my shit together Jesus Christ how was your week my week was uh, I was fucking angerifying angerifying it was vexing I have to say the least I'd uh, 
I talked to you about the yeah, yeah, we talked to you last week about the the panto and all the rest of it. Good Jesus, I had no idea the following that some of the some of my cast fellow cast members have when they tag you and shit like on Instagram. It's like what the fuck? He looks out as like twelve hundred people have liked this. It's like what 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 is going on? Twelve hundred people and stuff. I, I knew Dale had a big following, Dale Cronin. Jesus, but obviously spent the moment. But yeah, when you think about it, I suppose these people, but like Haley Joe, massive following. Leanne Moore, massive following. I need to get my shit together and get on. <clears throat> I've not been inspirational enough either, and I don't thank enough people. It would seem every second picture is ah, big shout out. Thank you so much to uh, Johnson's Turnips for sending me over these turnips. I don't. I. I didn't. Uh, the only thing I did this week, actually, uh, on lines with that, was uh, if you see like the, all the girls. I was kind of half pulled the piss out of Leanne as well, like that her inspirational quotes. On uh, half the pe- people listening to this probably know who Leanne Moore is, but her inspirational quotes they really get me through my day. <laughs> She's like, "Fuck off, Tom." <laughs> she knows. She knows I'm a bollocks, but it's uh, but it's all the thank. The one thing I did this week, I did a uh, quite a bitchy thing. I think I talked. I did it a couple of weeks ago with biscuits, which I never picked up on, but I got a bag of spuds in Super Value on Sunday to make uh, roast spuds. Was it roast spuds? What the fuck did I make? Yeah, I did spuds that even. One spot, little black spot. In fairness, in fairness, it wasn't to be spotted by most. But if you check out my Instagram, you'll see it. Holy fuck! I just cut into the spot and I went a bit further. I was like, okay, this black spot is still going. So I just chopped the top off the spot. Whole thing was hollow. It looked like something out of the fucking fucking Stranger Things or something. It was an old gross looking fucking ripped out center of a spot. It was just. I think I put up something like the blight is back. Fucking, it was just nasty nasty looking of course Eva Dooley had to write underneath it and it was oh oh god of uh, your one Nikita uh, Nikita fame Eva had to write it looked like the blue waffle veg thing. it was like oh Jesus Christ it was bad but now you're just saying it's on a whole nother fucking level of bad oh Jesus Jesus but the, with the reason why the, that wasn't the whole reason why the gig was angerifying anyway it wasn't it was um Lovely gig in the International on Thursday night. Um, smash. Got a cold, of course, like a fucker. So the lads let me go on early because I was like coughing and spluttering and stuff. But I took her service car in. I would think I, I, I may have mentioned that. They, it was great little runner. Got through the NCT like a... F- but she did. But the fucking alternator started shit the bed. Now, if anybody doesn't foot... Now, I'm no mechanic here, but I know what an alternator does. It's kind of like the dynamo on a bike. But what it does is as the engine is turning, it's recharging the battery all the time. But if this thing isn't fucking working, then the engine isn't getting this thing to charge the battery. So you're just purely using battery, which driving to gigs with the lights on at night. Mm, yeah, in the car park, it was fine. It was fine. Friday night, Thursday night after the inter, the car park I park in, your man's a fucking gent. Brings over the battery pack, gives a quick jump out the door. I said, all right, this definitely, the alternator needs changing. Had I looked at on Friday... Tom, the alternator needs changing. Monday's early, so we can do it. So I put the other car in for a fucking other job anyway, so I only had the one fucking car, so I was using this one. Friday night, same story, had to jump it. I'm like, oh, fuck, will this get me through the weekend? Looked like it was going to. Then, lo and behold, Saturday night, heading to the gig in Chaplains. On the M4, which anybody knows is a busy road, the Galway to Dublin road, things starts chugging power running out the lights start dimming I'm like oh you motherfucker now I had brought a spare battery this is where you have to make a decision right I'd brought the spare battery that I had it was fully charged I went will it be enough to get me to town and if I get that one zapped by your man will it be enough to get me back in one battery hmm this is decision time this is bare grill stuff. This is side of the fucking motorway changing a battery like in the fucking freezing cold at half eight at night. So I made a decision. I got in contact with Simon. I said, I can't fucking make it. Simon, get another act in. So I had to fucking abandon the car because I could. the second battery wouldn't take me back all the way. It was like, oh, you mother... F-. It was just... I managed... Do you know what? It's uh, an, uh, an older me would have lost the fucking temper and like pulled the wing mirror off or something or just fucking headbutted the windscreen. I didn't. I kept it together. Kept it together. Came home. Had a hot cocoa. Sat the fuck down. I was kind of, do you know, like, I was, there was one bit of me was kind of glad because I was fucking coughing. Like, I have this fucking bastard cold. I haven't had a cold in years. 
And Jesus Christ, I can see what all the whinging's about. It's some just pain in the bollocks, like. Fucking ankles are hurting and everything like an old woman. Sorry, just an old person. Uh, rather than being sexist, I'm sure old women's ankles are just as bad as old men's fucking ankles. But fucking hell, what a pain in the fucking hole. I'm glad I don't get sick often. Jesus Christ. Or is this a sign of things to come? It says, because I'm fucking old. But that was that anyway. That was that. Car got it sorted. Got it sorted, picked up on Sunday, dropped it over there. And it is now sorted. I picked it up today. I was on. I got. I got the bus into town. The guy behind me the whole way was just on the fucking phone. I was like, "Wow, this bus is fucking smashing." It's got Wi-Fi, plugs, sockets. I should say, and everything. The fucker behind me. The fucker behind me is on the fuck. He's on the phone. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 she You know that cunt. You know that cunt that was fucking laughing at me when I got three years and fucking in Mount Joy. Yeah, well, he got fucking stabbed the other night and all. And he's just laughing about some bloke getting stabbed. The bloke that laughed at him when he got three years. He went down for three years. And he was saying it so loud, you knew full... Either this guy's fucking mentally deranged. Like, he was only semi-fucking human, this prick. And I looked around, you're kind of going... He's talking all this hard stuff. You're like, oh, you know, he must be a dangerous-looking fucker back. This fucking two-legged rat was sitting there with a fucking phone up to his ear you're like what he was like he was talking about knocking this guy out and beating the shit out of this guy and you're like I looked around and this fucker he wouldn't blow the fucking froth off the top of a cappuccino the cunt the fucking state you'd wring his fucking scrawny neck with fucking half a hand so yeah that was that was, that was the joys of the fucking <laughs> I'm sure I, that's I don't not to sound snobby at all because I'm not but I just fucking I live in a place where you need a car anyway so I don't get to use the bus that often but this was fucking special and I got off the bus I went I'm gonna fucking do this I'm not gonna use a cab because I had plenty of time today so I got off the bus got on the Lewis travelled with the Lewis and the Lewis is always fucking interesting anybody who's ever been on the red line in the Lewis in Dublin city centre will know it's a special <laughs> yeah there's a special couple of characters and of course there's this couple sitting there and she's apologizing going i'm sorry uh yeah and you know i'm sure they're the same in every country just some over-the-top accent but they draw out their words and of course they're they're like something out of the fucking walking dead this too and he's going it's all right it's all right so i'm looking at him going what where the f- how the fuck do you get through your day like I mean, my day falls to fucking ribbons if I've half a fuck up. You people are just wandering around being fuck ups. Like, how do? What do you do for money? Like, what do you? How? Like, they're fucked from the drugs, and up they get off the bus at James's hospital or off the Lewis at James. With the Lewis, for anybody who doesn't know, is uh, an overground tram system throughout Dublin. And the red line is a special, special fuck. It goes to some special places. It picks up some normal spots too, but it's just, it seems to have a fucking couple of characters. But these, this couple get off. She's got a set of crutches in her hand, so clearly she's invalided. She's walking perfectly fine with two crutches in her hand. She's got a fully made, full length joint sticking out of her fucking mouth, ready to light. Clearly medicinal. A fucking, jo- like you're going, I have no problem with marijuana. But still in the free state of fucking the Republic of Ireland marijuana is still illegal drinking outside is still illegal like if she had a can of beer it'd just be as a but she's walking with a fucking joint like there's no spot there's no place that that's legal I don't know maybe maybe the medicinal I don't know it was it was a special special <laughs> but it got the car we're back on track we're back and I'm, I'm fucking rambling on way too long because this, this was a long enough old podcast. Um, gigs coming up this week. Uh, I'm to be an unshot tonight, but uh, renovations. I was supposed to be ho- hosting it tonight. They thought the renovations would be finished on Monday. Clearly, the lads didn't have a good enough toe up their hole, which was pretty much the words of the promoter going, uh, Had you ran it, Tom? He was just blowing smoke up my hole, to be fair, but they haven't finished it, so not tonight. I'm picking up a buddy, actually. It works out fine. He's picking up a car here in Ireland and taking it back to the UK, so that works out grand. This Friday, though, I'm looking forward to it. Um, friend of the podcast, Richard Kiley, he's fighting for the Bama World title in the Three Arena, so I'll be going to that. That'll fucking be great. Saturday, then, is a busy little day Saturday. I'm filming a sketch I th- with Neil Delamere in the morning, and then we're off to Cork. 
off the cork the woolshed I'll be there on behalf of Heineken Rugby Club I don't know who the two legends past legends are that I'll be interviewing but it'll be cool if you're around Cork on Saturday for the Ireland match pop into the woolshed I'll be there natter and talking shite with a couple of uh, past legends uh, I'm not like I said I'm not going to keep you any fucking longer boring to live and piss out of you if you do have any questions keep keep up the following on the old chatty snaps Tom Bear O'Mahony uh, Instagram is Tom O'Mahony Comedy and Watch McCullough it's the very same Facebook like I said Twitter you can find me very easy Tom underscore O'Mahony or Buckshot Pod all these things lads find me very easy I'll be in Tala on the 17th and I'll be in London on the 25th other than that, there's a couple of other gigs with Tom Stade and stuff like that in between. But then the panto is going to take over my entire fucking life. Uh, my guest today, I've met this man a handful of times in my... He's another one that he when he worked for 104, FM 104, um, he, they shared the same office, the same floor, a spin. So as you may have noticed, there was a bit of trend with a couple of spin and ex-spin people on the old podcast. But he... Uh, he worked for FM1. He works for 98 now. Derek Quilty. He's a fucking sound skin. Kind of a good, funny weirdo. I Like, he knows Chris and he knows Mike Sheridan and all the rest of it. And there's a there's a good, funny kind of weird vibe between between the lads. Like, And he's a funny fucker himself too. Like, we got deep into it. This podcast, I reckon, could have gone on way fucking longer. But he had to be on the air in like 45 minutes from the time of us finishing this. So, uh, I, there's no doubt he'll be back because we were really getting the ball rolling. He was getting very comfortable um we spoke a bit about fucking suffering from anxiety and stuff like that and it was an interesting interesting fun talk though as well like it was good crack um but you could see once you you'll hear it in the podcast once he kind of frees up by jesus he fucking he's flying it he was great crack i brought biscuits too which i think is always good because we didn't know each other that well do you know what i mean that that well but i knew he was an interesting fella um and biscuits are always good at any this is a this is a, I'm telling you now, this is a piece of advice I will give you. If you it may sound obvious, but I'm not fucking cotton you. You could be going down for fucking twenty years to life. Bring a packet of biscuits into court if you can get them so much way and just sneak them to the fucking jury or to the judge. Biscuits you know what? Tell you. Nobody can ever give out about biscuits. To be a dark day the day you meet somebody who has no time for biscuits of any sort. Fig rolls, fair enough. And there was a couple other fucking nasty bastards. But by jeez, you bring a packet of fucking hobnobs or viscounts or one of those. Tell you, it'll be good. So without further ado, <laughs> my shit talk is done. Please enjoy Mr. Dara Quilty. Lovely stuff. Hey, thanks very much for coming in too, by the way. Hi, Tom. Hi, how are you, Dara? Very good, thank you indeed. It's, uh, you enjoy, what do you make of roundies? I've never had roundies before. Tom emailed me and asked me to come on the podcast. He said that there'll be tea and biscuits, and he actually delivered on the biscuits. I was actually going to get biscuit biscuits, but I got utterly disappointed. I went up to the Duns up the road and went for the special fancy ones and opened up. Duns had to apologise to me. Why? Be- because every one of them were smashed to shit. <laughs> Smashed to bits. Did knock off wagon wheels? Uh, yeah, but they're better than a fucking wagon wheel, aren't they? Who makes wagon wheels? Cadbury's, no. No, Nestle. Ah. Those bastards. That's the competition, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're right up there with, I mean, their lunchbox ready, like, aren't they? I could live the rest of my life without having chocolate, but I could not live the rest of my life without crisps. Not a fucking hope could I get get away get by without crisps. How many packs of crisps would you eat a week? Or is it just a thing that you, it's like being told you can never go to Guatemala? The most accurate um, marketing statement yeah. I think ever used is once you pop, you just can't stop. Oh my God. Because I will buy a large thing of Pringles. Yeah. Eat half or two thirds of the chew, chew. Take a break and come back and finish it. So it means I haven't finished it all in the one sitting. <laughs> I can see, yeah, you'd be, you know be guilt ridden, wouldn't you? Oh, no, it's actually, horrendous. I wouldn't. I would. I fucking wouldn't. I I'd sit there and. Just... Are you not going to get a lot of cancer off crisps? <laughs> no, you're dead right. If there's, there are worse vices to have than fucking crisps, like, and I've gone, <laughs> I got all crafty because uh, Lidl and Aldi have gone all crafty with their stuff, like. Yeah, they have a thing called crispies. What? Crispies. 
They're uh, nuts. You can get in a uh, little. And, and they're so. And MSG is the flavor, is it? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. much. Like you dip your hand in for the nuts. They're like um. Remember hot nuts you get in a bar when you were a kid? Oh, right, yeah, like yeah, hot yeah. nuts, and you dip your hand into the bag, and you keep on eating them, but the more you eat, the more shit you get in your fingers. Fuck. And the more delicious it is to... Oh, my God, yeah. every bit of that. I the terrible that. name for a thing, Krispies. Yeah, for fuck's sake, it sounds like a, a slang word for something. Yeah, you got yeah. in your balls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The... No, because, of course, now they have things like fucking... St- you know, there's a... They deep fried vegetables now. Mm-hmm. Actually, peeled vegetables. They've done trying to make spuds or ch- crisps out of like parsnips and oh, stuff. Gee. Oh, yeah, no, I've had that shit. The healthy yeah, crisps. Yeah, but there's nothing healthy about it at all. No, and they're disgusting. It's deep so, fried. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I could eat. I'll eat. Uh, no, no more. Ch- these are chocolate biscuits. Why we're talking about this? I'd eat no no more chocolate for the rest of my life, but no more crisps. I'd have a problem. I would. Yeah, yeah. Any particular brand? Pringles. Is it Pringles. Oh, Jesus which, Christ! Which ones? Um. Probably the cheese and onion ones, dark green. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah I'm yeah. i vile to sit beside eating Pringles or Doritos because of the dusty stuff. That's why well, I lick, I lick the fucking... Yeah. When no one's around, yeah. I lick the crisp. Oh, I'll do it in front of people yeah. too. I'm a fucking pig. Yeah, no, it's awful. Yeah. Um, and I, but I'll wolf the entire thing and yeah. not care. Yeah. Jellies are my vice. I really... I love crisps, but jellies... Harry Bow jellies. Anything. You're going to get diabetes from that problem. I know I am. Yeah. I know I am. But I have a fucking issue. Mm. I, it's it's at any point and any. I don't have jellies on me now, which is a real thing. <laughs> but in the car, I discovered in the glove box, I was looking for a spare fuse. A friend of mine's two uh, packs of jellies. A friend of mine's dad uh, became a, a ca- became a taxi driver. Right. And um, a, an addictive personality, let's just say, over the years. Yes. And when he became a taxi driver, he started with chocolate. Right. And would eat like 16 to 17 Snickers bars <laughs> in a session in a session and you know he'd come back and you'd see them in, in the car like the, all the rappers when we were young like. yeah and then he got diagnosed with diabetes and was told to stop Snickers related diabetes stop having I don't want, I don't want to take down any brands here in the podcast it's Sorry. sugar related Nestle, diabetes Nestle are going to shut us so, down so um, he took uh, he, he was he had diabetes and he was asked to stop you know sweets are very bad for you yeah and he didn't stop and his diabetes escalated. Uh, he lost his leg to Jesus diabetes. Jesus Christ. And he's now going blind currently from his diabetes. And my friend said to me, because um, we were talking about Irish men. Yeah. My father, maybe your father, his father, just the men, Irish men of that generation mm. who didn't have Bre- Brezzy to come and say, hey man, it's all right to have feelings. <laughs> so these lads, <laughs> these lads are like... Push it the fuck down. Don't ever talk about how you <laughs> Ran feel. Ran that shit inside. You know, and that's, you know, that's the way they are in that generation. So, uh, and it's similar, my mate's dad and my dad are the same at hospitals. Like, mm. Don't want to go to hospital. Don't have anything to do with hospital. Fuck that shit. So I met him recently. I don't want to say his name because uh, <laughs> you definitely know who it is. He'll, um, he is uh, my dad uh, fell ill a while ago. was in hospital. He's out now. Everything's okay. And my mate came to say, Jesus Christ, what happened? Is he all right? Yeah. And the minute my dad got into hospital, he was freaked out. He was wanted to leave the hospital. He had yeah. he had a mini stroke, which is very serious. Right? Yeah. And he wanted to leave the hospital because when he was in the hospital, he thought he would catch something in the hospital <laughs> and it would kill him. <laughs> right? So I was telling my mate this and he was like, my dad's the same. This is diabetic dad. He said he'll get put into the hospital and told, we're going to put you on all these drips, whatever insulin levels are crazy. You know, not, can't have any sugar. And you need to be in here for a week. And he would check himself out of the hospital four days later. Just arrive to the home house. Wow. He'd get a taxi home with the, the drip thing still in his arm. <laughs> and be like, they haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing. And he'd start munching Cornettos out of the fucking <laughs> And that's a true... That is a, um, that is a true story. I had this conversation with him. And wow. I was like, they must be fucked. Like, yeah. I'm sort of glad that I'm not... Like, do you have listeners outside of Ireland? Yeah. Like... We're very bad. We're great and endearing, and yeah. it's brilliant. And during we had a storm here, storm Ophelia, mm-hmm. that nobody took seriously. I don't no. think at all. They, they were just delighted with the day off work. Yeah, uh, I, I I got an email from the head of news for the station I work for saying yeah. she got a note from the Taoiseach, the Prime Minister of Ireland, to say um, people aren't taking the warning seriously. <laughs> Will you push it harder? Turn up the juice a bit. You know what I mean? Wow. I'm just, and, and she said, this is not reflective of our organization, but this is an email to all media. So the Taoiseach emailed, I, probably, I have it on my phone somewhere, emailed all media to say, people aren't taking this seriously, will you? 
you know, reiterate there's a fucking storm coming. You know that kind of yeah. way? So I think there's a niceness about our Irish people in that sort of like, we don't take shit too seriously, but then when you get diagnosed with diabetes, you sort of probably should start thinking about your health a little bit. I suppose, more. yeah, but it, there's a trade off there too, like, uh, you know, because what happened to we become Americans then, you know, to a certain degree? Or America, is there any perfect balance like to. No, I don't think so, but I do specifically remember in the 1990s, uh, Irish people thinking Americans are crazy. Sure, they all have therapists. They're, oh, they're yeah. crazy. When everyone should have a fucking therapist. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're or a fucking... some way to vent. Anyway. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where in Ireland, the stigma is so fucking bad. That, it's like, starting to wear off, though. You no, know, it is. And, and, and when I mentioned Brezzy a minute ago, like it, I genuinely have yeah, a lot of respect. Yeah, not in a jovial way. I have a lot of respect that. for what he did and other people. Well, did. it has helped big time because he had so much respect out. Like, because, and I had a perfect example. I think I talked a couple of weeks ago about this on the podcast. But the pub next... Like, I moved out the country since in the last... What county are you from? I'm from Tipperary. Tipperary. Um, but I was living like in Portobello up until... Just uh, just to begin of this year, yeah, right? I don't know. Fucking rent started going. Back well, I just had enough. It just wasn't. It, I re- I hit uh, like the eight nine year mark that I went. Oh, okay. I'm not meant to be in with this many people around me. It yeah. makes me too tense yeah. altogether. Yeah. Like, but we're out the country. But right by us, there's a bar next, to, and it, like it's the greatest fucking bar there can ever be a bar of. Because where, where how far out are you? We're exactly thirty miles. Okay, so forty five minutes door yeah. to door here at the international. Last night I was forty five minutes door to door. The commuter built. The commuter built. Well, yeah. Do you know what? It's 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 weird because the place hasn't been developed at all in like two hundred years. Okay. It's exactly what it would have looked like years See, ago. Yeah, it's a local pub. It's a local as fuck. Yeah. Like, but I was in there one evening and one of the lads I brought in, I was he was new to us. Listen, the ball breaking that goes on in here is fucking <laughs> amazing. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'm a part of the group now, so they they ripped the piss out of me mm. too for like the first ever night I walked in there, I was on telly. At the time. Okay. And it looked like I'd walked in to tell him that I was on telly. <laughs> and everybody was looking. I didn't realise it. And people were looking over my head. And one fellow went, ah, you, and it was only filmed like an hour, a month previous. It was this thing from uploaded from oh, the Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was one fellow just looked at me and went, just fair play to you. Got all the weight off you fairly quick, didn't you? Just, <laughs> bang! Yeah. Just to hit me, right? And, but we're in there. One of the lads was inside there. He was sitting in his dressing gown. And he'd just come from the hospital. In the he bar. Ga- yeah, he g- gasping for a pint. Yeah. <laughs> and the lads kept on slagging him that he was Hugh Hefner. Because yeah. he was alive at the time. Or yeah. But the, uh, they still would have done it regardless. But one of the lads was, he'd kind of head down. And the guy beside, and it was maybe in his late 50s or whatever. And one of the guys beside me says, you all right? Ara fucking have the old depressions again. <laughs> and I swear to God, three or four lads around him went, hi, don't be fucking, don't be eating that shit up. You have a fucking problem be saying it out in front of all of us here. So the next thing he just started unloading about how his mother didn't fucking appreciate him. That's very interesting, isn't and it? And I was fucking blown away going, yeah. this would be, if you took a snapshot of this, nobody, anybody who was fighting for like mental awareness would look at that and go, that's definitely not a place where people are free with their thoughts and stuff like that. Couldn't be more further from the truth. But that's it's very interesting though. That amazing. That's, yeah. don't, be, don't, don't be fucking swallowing up that old shit. You get a fucking dose. A dose was how it was. Yeah, you get yeah. a fucking dose from swallowing up all that shit. But it is a very Irish way of dealing with it though, isn't it? It is, but it was, it was perfect. What the fuck? But, but that's what he needed. He would have been weirded out if you put an, ar- an actual arm around us and said, sit down there please, Dennis, and let's talk about it. I think just, that wouldn't have worked for him. I think that's a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the battle is to do it correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was needed, because that's, everybody fucking varies, so... You, there isn't one one size fits all. Like, you know no. what I mean? Some fellas just need... And I, as soon as I moved out of the country, I swear to God, all my temper levels came down. Really? Yeah. Why, yeah, why is not, it just Dublin is too much? It's any... Like, it was it was too much because I was getting to a point where it was like, I, I don't feel any level of freedom here whatsoever. I'm being dictated. My every waking fucking moment mm. has been dictated to me by the surrounding environment. Yeah. The fucking lights come on outside. That's me. I got it all right. Yeah. That's, you know, and there's... Thing, like even down to like oh now we're today we're closing to that road fucking park your car pay, pay to park my car outside my own fucking yeah, house know, yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. and it just it was uh, I don't ask for that much fucking freedom but it's like if I want to fucking walk around with no shirt on out the back of my fucking house yeah I don't want to have a neighbour looking in over were you in an apartment or a no house? well it was for all the world it was that's what it was but it was do you know those Georgian single story houses in Portobello like along you know, the like, canal uh, near the canal near the yeah, canal yeah 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 so it was single story single story yeah. it was for all the world probably the sell for 400,000 oh fucking phenomenal yeah. phenomenal money like and to be fair there's only a heap of shit like with a yeah. good paint job yeah like you know what I mean this was 
uh, jumped up fucking derelict. Yeah. But, you know, with an inch fucking gap under the door, like, I mean, no like, no self-respecting builder would walk away from that going, that is ready to fucking put in. You didn't watch, the, like, there was a thing on RTE last night, I didn't see it. If it was a prime time investigate. I, I only read the newspaper this morning on my phone, about 60 people inside in a fucking house. Yeah. Like, what the f- But it's 20, it's almost 2018, late 2017 now. In case you're listening to this podcast in <laughs> four years. When was the last recession? 2008 through to probably two years ago. Three years when it ago. hit originally. Oh, yeah, 2008. I know that for a fact because yeah. I, I was flying high at the time. Of course. Yeah. Um, it's not been 10 years since. Mm-hmm. And property value and rent has, is almost back to where it was. It's beyond it in some places. Yeah. It's beyond it because people. Where the fuck are you going to buy a house here, though? You can't buy a house here. You can only fuck off out the country and buy a house. Mm. That's all you can do. And yeah. that's that's my intention, like. Yeah. Because there's... Yeah, I'm not going to put that fuck... Because I, I built houses for long. I'm a civil engineer. I built them for long enough. I know physically what it costs to actually throw a block, one block on top of another. Interesting, yeah. And when you look at a house that I swear... What's their profit? Like 500% or something? Phenomenal! Is it, it depends on what the ground you paid for, fair enough. Yeah. Like, that's where all the money is. Like, where the fuck it is in positional wise. That's yeah. where all the money is. But you look at your average fucking house with, say, 1,100 square foot semi-detached, right? Yeah. Out in Blanchardstown. You might pay fucking 380 to 450,000 for the thing, depending on what location it's in. I'm not codding with you. You could fuck up most of them if you were a builder and say you were going building 20 at a time. On average, you're probably averaging about 90 grand a house. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, insane. And that's paying fellas good money. Like, Yeah. Like if you were to tip away at it yourself, do you know, to do some of the work yourself and all the rest of it, like you'd probably get a shave to shave it down to about But they're saying that um, uh, it's always hard to buy property. Mm-hmm. There, was a, there was a whole debate. I listen to a lot of talk radio. Yeah. Well, you are in radio. So. I work in radio, but I don't. I can't listen to music radio. So, like, I don't know if it's an age thing or I've been working in the business too long. So, I literally, I like RT radio one. I listen to like yeah, no, I do most yeah. of the time. Yeah, and I love Joe Duffy's show. It's brilliant. And he had um, he had a girl on saying that uh, complaining about she can't afford a house, and another woman on who bought a house in the eighties, and she was making the point that you know, this new generation. I don't know what, what when the cutoff for a millennial is, but like yeah. You always go away, you go on holidays, people are going to college, they're taking a year off here, a year mm-hmm. off there, which is it, which is true. Yeah. In 1970s Ireland, 1980s Ireland, you left school at 18, you're lucky to go to college, you got a job, and you were married and having your first baby at 23, maybe. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And you're straight into buying a house in Dublin for 30 oh, What was she pounds. saying that you weren't blowing so her point was, shit, like. her point was, this woman was on saying, this is how we did it, we didn't go to the pub every weekend we had to save we had to mm. live here and this other woman was saying like yeah but like the the difference between what people earn now yeah and the property value so if a house was 30,000 pounds in 1982 yeah in Dublin yeah I know these are no that'd be close 30,000 pounds yeah, in, yeah. in in Dublin the combined salary of man and woman say could have been 15,000 pounds let's yeah. just say seven thousand pounds a year each or whatever i don't know if that's accurate now but like so that's pretty much double yeah so if you want to buy a house in dublin now say a five hundred thousand euro house that has four bedrooms or three bedrooms yeah. that means your combined salary has to be two hundred and fifty thousand. yeah to reflect what it was yeah so it's now like it's almost like if you earn 50 grand a year here working a job in a bank yeah i don't know is that good money probably that it's 10 times your fucking salary forget about that you're gonna have a gun to your head for 35 years yeah but it seems still, if you it's, can get it. it's still that it's still ten times. So like it, 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 if you were earning seven thousand mm. pounds in nineteen eighty two and a house was seventy thousand pounds, yeah. it was never gonna happen. You know, so the well, actual that, ratio is oh, it's, it's fucked because even I was we were there yesterday that same pub for the first time ever we we had food in it yesterday. Even though we're there now since February, but ourselves went, Come on, we'll go for lunch in there and oh this was glorious, Darren. You yeah. walk in, right? And there was a, a, a sign said lunch four course for twelve quid. Okay. Can't beat that. No. Can't be beaten, right? I hope it's Carvery at least. Huh? No, I walked in, right? This is where it gets glorious, right? This is where it gets so fucking country. It's beautiful. I walk in. I says to the, I saw your hat. He says, oh, yeah. I said, we're here for lunch. Grand, sit down. I'll drop it down to you. <laughs> Think about that now. No menu. No menu. No what's on. Nothing. Yeah. So out came delicious uh, chicken and vegetable soup. Yeah. Homemade. With homemade bread. Then came out just roasted pork chop and spuds. No choice, here no you go. No choice, this is it. This is 
Fuck yeah. And I'm, I don't know if like that was pork chop Thursday. Do you know what I mean? Like I need no to find idea. out. Is it the same every It's week? like your man's restaurant in Japan, the sushi guy. You know, yeah, the yeah. You go in and you don't get to pick no, the no. sushi. He just he goes, eat, eat that. But the, a woman, the woman that was cooking, she came out and I'd met her once before, I think. I think I shook hands with her or whatever. But she came out and she said, oh, I think you wanted to that, that, uh, a ghost story fucking show that I did years ago with Gordon again. Of course. Repeated. I've seen it. Jesus and, uh, Christ, Gordon. It was on again. Haunted you know, fucking... Like, like if we had any decent agents, we'd be all getting paid out of this shit. <laughs> but she, was, she came out to ask me all about... Uh, uh, about ghosts and whatever yeah. I, just cl- I, misses, I know nothing about ghosts I yeah. was just a bollocks to brought on or whatever but she started pouring her life story out to the two of us like while in her apron you know what I mean and stuff but it was um, she said like back in she had nine children right okay uh, how old is this woman she's in her 70s maybe no not even not even I'd say late 50s okay. right but they bought their house back in the day because she was explaining where their house is, where their house was it's just outside the village but it's actually a little cul-de-sac of about 12 houses they were all ex-council but they bought their house off the county council by grant unbelievable back in like the early 70s unbelievable and I went and I'm trying to be like I didn't I couldn't tell if she was kind of going I know right you know yeah. it was big money or whatever but I went oh sure five grand was big money back then she was ah it was but you know it was manageable like yeah so even she was going you're all fucked yeah, today. we are fucked. We were given a fucking hand up like to buy ourselves out of our council houses. Like. But it was a go- like gorgeous. Like it's, it, it almost has a, ba- a bad stigma. Like this is a gorgeous little bow shaped. Uh, like you think, I thought they were actually military houses because they're so oh, nice. I know so you're well saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they were, um, but she was like, no, we were given the option. Do we keep paying the 20 quid a week that they were or whatever? Or do you want to buy the five grand? I, it's, I know one person, uh, I just turned 30 last month. So I'm at that point right, yeah. where people are buying mm, property. Yeah. I know one person who's bought a house mm. with their partner from their own accord, like from their own money. You know, right? Yeah. Other yeah. people I know have been lucky, or there's money in the family, yeah. or something, which is great. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't. I, I don't think there's any problem if your parents or your father can give you money for a house or has yeah. property, or your wife or your boyfriend or whatever. Somebody has money. Take it. Absolutely. Look, there's no... Yeah. If you, like, you and I, if we were in our 50s or 60s now and we had kids... You know, of course you You were would. touring arenas doing stand-up comedy and you had a daughter and you wanted to buy her house. So you're going to buy her house. Of course you fucking are. You know, of so... Of course you are. Yeah. Like, I, I, I met it off. Met about what you're doing is paying off some other prick's mortgage. You uh, know... Yeah, fuck the banks. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Just yeah. bypass the yeah. system. Like, but I just met a guy the other day and he was... It was, it was actually that guy who had the depressions. But he was gone. And he said, I don't know what to be fucking... Cause I, got I like the way it's plural. Yeah. Yeah. And because he called around, he was actually helping me out because he's a good good sized ladder and I needed to change a bulb up by the... So he called around and I said, you all right anyway after the... I said, everything okay? And he was like, ah, fucking grand. And I don't know what to be fucking wrong with me anyways. I, just, I suppose I missed out on a lot of fucking things, but he says, I took on the farm, like, and I took an ant. I was... I had plans to be in a stone mason. I wanted to go across Europe, like, you know, and fucking dick about fucking... But an ant left me. This, and now it has to be said. He goes, I'm not really to complain about. She left me 150 acres wow. and a fucking gorgeous house. Like. Yeah, I mean that's straight out the gate. Yeah. That's you started. Like. Yeah, and only, yeah. And he was like, so I'm not really. Yeah. He's, but there's just something I need to create. I yeah. Said, well, fuck it, start making sculptures or something. I said, you know what I mean? There's, don't be getting stuck in the pines. Don't be getting stuck but into the pines. The like. booze is. Uh, but you see, there's a, a lot thing, of single. Yeah. Middle aged, a lot of ladies, and I've said this on the podcast, would do well to move around where I am. A lot of ladies, if they were looking for a gentleman in his mid 50s, would land. <laughs> they would do well. You should set up an app. I fucking should. Like, like there's, Escort there's Ireland. There's at least four or five fellas that were in, are within fucking touching distance of our house nearly yeah. that have, have land and have no mortgages. I often wonder what it would be like to be on, you know, Tinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't you set your radius on Tinder? Right, yeah, yeah. So if you're in County Roscommon, fuck, in Kilmore, say, yeah, and you put your radius on Tinder, you know, for 15 miles, you have like what, like four people, if yeah, at the yeah, most, yeah. like <laughs> who you know. <laughs> Is it, uh, where, where are you from? Dublin. Right? Are you from yeah, Dub- Dublin? Yeah, yeah. Because you don't have a strong either side accent. Do you not think so? No. No, no, if anything, there's hints of country in your accent. It must be working with country fuckers or something, is it? Or I don't. I I was told that before. I. Uh, I rent a studio in County Offaly. Right. And uh, what's going on, Joe Egan? And uh, when I, I spend a lot of time down there recording music. Yeah, because I wanted to ask you about your band too. So when I do that in like in sports, a week, two weeks, whatever. Why, why Offaly? 
I just know the guy who owns the studio for a long time. Yeah. It's affordable. Yeah. You know, that kind of way. So, like, I don't, I don't rent it, like, on a monthly basis. Yes, I right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for the use of it. And they're so Midlands. And the thing about the Midlands in Ireland is they have rhyming slang. They do, don't they? Rhyming slang for everything. So, I, that starts to infect me. Yeah. But then I spend a lot of time in the US. When I go there, I don't, <laughs> I don't get the American yeah, yeah, yeah. twang. All I'll say is their phrases. Mm. You know, you've got to say like you, you know, sidewalk and these trash cans. Yeah. yeah, you have to say that. Oh, you have to. Can I get the check you. instead of the bill? You know. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, when I go down there, it sort of my, my accent just sort of starts to drone into well, brother. That's what they say yeah, down yeah. there, you know. <laughs> but I'm not that person. I, that I, I don't feel like I. There, there is a study on the people who Spun Jackson. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like my dad would be a great man for us. Really? If he is in Dublin. And he's going to see the dubs play. And he's drinking in some fucking Hill 16 bar right. or whatever. He'd be Ronnie Drew. Be, How are you? How are you going on? I oh, good. Yeah, I know. You know that kind of way? <laughs> uh, or, or he's gone to Lansdowne Road to, to watch rugby. Yeah. Everything will be very much, oh, it's a, a brilliant and truly great game. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. And he's that guy, but he comes from the publican background. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's somewhat of a social yes, comedian. Yeah, yeah. I've been known as Johnny Quilty's son for my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> he is a very well known publican and um Does he still have the pub? No, he works for Charlie Chalk. Right. Who owns a lot of pubs around the Dublin. Goat and a couple of more. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. he is now. So he um is very, very well known. You know, as it before like, I've no doubt he's served me pints. Probably. Yeah. Probably. And uh, for years I'm Johnny's Quilt Johnny Quilty's son. Right. That's what whatever I was playing music. Johnny Quilty's son's playing music and Johnny Quilty's son and then when I m- went on to RT television <coughs> He became Derek Quilty's dad. All right. For a short time. Oh. Until it was like, oh, Johnny Quilty's son is on the television. You know that kind of <laughs> way. Like, <laughs> and that's the way it has been. Yeah. You know. And it, the and how often do you head down for practice then? Like, so no, so that I, the studio is for is a recording studio. So yeah. I have um, if nobody knows who I am, which is quite likely. Uh, I've been playing music for a long time. Very hard to make money out of it. That's I work in radio outside of that. And uh, I basically in two thousand, what are we now? Seventeen, probably in two thousand fourteen. I started to, I started this new band called yeah. Appella, and I wanted to uh, record an album. Deadly. And I wanted to front it and sing. Yeah. I'm not really a good singer, but I wanted to sing because I don't want to rely. It's the equivalent of doing stand up comedy. Yes. And you write all the jokes and come up with the show, but you don't do it. Oh fuck that! You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you've got to depend that. on yeah, another yeah. guy to do it. Yeah. So. I was writing songs and producing songs and I wanted to sing them rather than yeah. depending on yeah, another yeah. singer. Uh, and also I wanted to learn how to engineer, produce and use studio equipment and record. Deadly, yeah. It's really boring for anyone that's not into it. Like the first thing I looked at when we were here was your Zoom microphone here. Yeah, I know. but it, you know Awful what? interest. Awful. You'd, you'd be fierce surprised the amount of people that are on this podcast that have... I'll just straighten that. Oh before. yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. The amount of people that are actually... Um, <laughs> it's called its called the, the Zoom Handy Recorder. <laughs> handy Recorder. Because that's what it is. Do you know what, though? But I, I'm not using it to its full capacity at all, at all. Like, I mean, it's, it is actually very, very versatile. But it's very good at, um, at balancing it. Yeah, it's a binaural well. microphone, you see. So it's recording on all sides, I Look think. Look at you. Look at you. Loving it now. It's awful. But come oh, here, I'm getting more and more into it because I was out. I'm. I'm. Uh, I was out with. Did you ever come across Gordon Rochford? Of Don't know the name. The Conspiracy Guys podcast. No. It's you'd like it now if you're into conspiracies at all. It's very and Gordon is very funny. He did stand up for. I a like week. not believing conspiracies. Oh, he he digs it. He doesn't say whether it's true or not. Is it he's, American? No, he's fucking out in Inchicore. He's from West. Oh, okay. but hugely popular in America. Okay, like on a colossal. I'm not fucking joking. What's it's it called? The Conspiracy Guys. The Conspiracy Guys. Yeah, it's it's all oh, you'll fucking you'll really like it. But okay. he's a madman for the tech. You want to go out to his place? You you honestly yeah. you would get a slight semi. I'd say no. I do like it. Yeah, no, I do like he it. He has yeah. the fucking place. Kiss it yes. because he's making good money now and all the gear. Yeah. And he was even showing me things. He goes, Tom, you need to be doing vlogs. I went, Ara, fuck off. Yeah, so who know, wants to? Yeah. He goes, Look, would you stop that attitude? I had that attitude. People want to watch me even play video games, Tom. Get fucking, get your head around that one. I went, 
Christ above. Okay. So much money in the video games. He says, I'm making fucking money from video games. I'm making money because my Patreon customers yeah. are, are fans. They get the video link to the podcast. Other listeners that don't. Listen for free don't. He says, these get to listen. And he says, and I vlog walking into town to conferences because he gets invited to all the fucking conspiracy shit. Yeah, all yeah. Yeah. Everything to do a podcast now he's at because they ask him, you know. He says, I just vlog myself walking into town seeing a few things. He says, man, you go hunting. He says, you do fucking, you bought a new chainsaw the other day. He says, people want to see that kind of shit. That's very true, actually. Says, yeah. They focus. It's be interesting. He's like Christ and Christ above. He says, all, and he said, it. he goes, even I just met a mate, mate of mine who's up to news talk now as, as I was, Jim Elliott was walking past. Yeah. Coming out the, and he, he, he fucking said it to me. He goes, Tom, if you know, he says, all your neighbors know what you do for a living. I says, yeah. Because then it'll all be totally cool with just a little segment because it's nothing but mad fuckers and funny fuckers. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, so that would shoot their own yes, characters. Yes, the morning, the morning before uh, Tuesday morning, yeah. November first, pheasant shooting. And the guy I went with, he's a bloke that lives nearby, and he's kind of a tough, angry fucker. Like, yeah. But he, amazing story. We're walking along like we got it, and it didn't really matter if we saw anything. It was a class country yeah. walk on Friday yeah. morning, like. And he was just telling me his fucking intense story about how powerful his mother was because yeah. his father up. Oh, Fuck stick, fucked off oh, back in the really? 50s okay, yeah. and raised six of them. Like, but it was just I was going, fuck that, make. I wonder. Would, but then I was going, would he be okay with? And see, she, that's the thing. Probably Jim, not. And then when there's a camera on, it yeah, changes. She gets weird. Then, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, but and Jim was kind of going, oh, I think they'd be okay with it because they know what you're doing. I'm like, I still don't think so. that's no. that's a, a moment where I don't think it's going to come across. Like, but on the flip side, like, there's always funny shit like happening around. And even I was gone, but how boring is day to day life? Because, Tom, have you not noticed how many people like your Snapchat? I was like, yeah, they do seem to interact a fair bit, all right. Yeah. But, and this will give you a perfect example. Last week, I bust my finger wide open, right? Burst the top of that finger wide open. From just, working? Yeah, I was just with a fucking hatchet, yeah. right? The back of the hatchet, actually. Yeah. Doing a stupid thing with it. Shouldn't. And I just took a picture of it and said, Thursdays, pumping blood. Just yeah. put it up Thursdays. The amount of people on Instagram that like that was my burst finger <laughs> it made no sense yeah. but people were like no no that's they want to see shit that's happening in the day but that's it now yeah that is it now I, the, I work with people who are called social influencers oh yeah oh Chris had a yeah Mike Sheridan had a had they, they had their own views on that I can tell you now of course uh, people do because so I'm not angry at social influencers. I think yeah, it, the lads it weren't is. shitting on them either, but they were kind of going, they were sh- kind of nearly shitting on society for going, the actual fuck. I think that's the thing, but it, it'll come full circle again. I'll tweet, yeah. Um, yeah. I work with a girl called uh, Diren, who's really popular on Instagram or Gary. Yeah. Her, yeah, I worked with her sister last year in, down in Limerick. And I've KB. often, like, I mean, she's doing radio to have a skill. Yeah. I guess. Uh, you, you know, to give day to day life meaning I suppose mm. you know it's just not, she doesn't need that salary really no from she, influencing from if she wanted to just spend a year promoting Brown Thomas or whatever it is I'm yeah. sure she could do that maybe she looks after her content I don't know yeah I don't know I don't really pay much attention I don't I, I don't really follow anyone I don't anyway I know that just from, from my own interest yeah not the Irish people like just I don't have like a guitar player or somebody that I go yeah, oh yeah. cool you know what I mean I just it's not I don't really find any of the vlogs interesting but um, uh, that's gonna I often say to her just ride the fucking wave yeah I feel like I've been working in radio for uh, almost 11 years on air just and I I always feel like it's gonna be over soon Really, it's going to be always over. on that cliff edge. Is this going to be over? Yeah. This is a, this is a job that uh, this is a good job to have, but I, I feel like uh, tomorrow they could call me in and say, "Hey, that that's it. we know, we know that you're fucking full of shit. You know, come on, yeah, get, yeah, out, yeah, yeah, get yeah. out of here." You know, because I've been working professionally since I went on the air professionally at nineteen. Did you? Yeah. With who? By myself. And I never wanted to work in radio. I never but had what it. radio station did you uh, go on first? Spin. Spin. I did a show on Spin called The Lock-In. Didn't come up with the name. From 9 to midnight when I was 19. When you were barely legal to drink. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I was also given carte blanche, as they say. You can do what you want. Where are you? Yeah. Wow. Because radio is sort of boring and formatted a lot of the time. Yeah. Well, I dislike Cormac Moore broke it down for us. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... 
Every station has a format, and it's all very boring. You can go on the radio, and you can it, you can go on the air and say nothing. I'll give you an example of it. So we, a song could end now. Yeah. And I could say, it's Dublin's Best Music Mix, 98 FM. How are you getting on? It's Dara here, and you can text me and let me know what you're up to, 0877 98 98 98. That's also our WhatsApp number. Or if you're on Twitter, you can get us at 98 FM or Instagram, Dublin's 98 FM. We're on Instagram as well. I've got the Goo Goo Dolls coming up, and this is Pink on 98FM. Now, that's airtime filled, but I have said nothing. nothing. You've actually said nothing I haven't there. Said, I have said nothing. 40, 40 seconds went nothing. by there and nothing. Nothing. And that, if you listen to radio, if you listen to music radio predominantly... You're after fucking this now for so many people. They don't, don't ever say anything. Because I saw you in action. You did? Uh, well, you. I was on with um, Cormac and Daniela one time. And Spin. And spin one evening. I don't know what the, what I was in for. I think I was chiming every so often, right? But there really wasn't a lot of chiming time, like yeah. Um, but it was more for the crack. I was in town. Cormac said, "Poppy." <laughs> but the lads were. I would say they were relatively. They weren't up to the speed you were up to, but you were coaching them at the side, and I think you were. Was half, I? Yeah, no. you were half doing your own fucking show out the out the door. And you came in and you said, no, no, what do we need to do there? And you have to listen. You have fucking 12 seconds. It's a ton of fucking time. It's awful. I have no recollection of it, is it? No, not at all. Yeah. You, were, you were quite literally doing another job at the time. But you were, you were helping the lads through what they were doing. And they were going, you're fucking bags of time there. Look at you. Look, look there's at least fucking half a second in that. Fuck bags of time. <laughs> and you were, you were, look, what you need to do is fucking put that thing over there. Fucking, and I didn't understand the terminology at all. But it was so Studio impressive that you analysis. were like, look at you were basically it looked like you were fucking driving two cars at the one time like. That's funny, and you were telling them how to drive that other car you were going look at fucking put it into first you bags of fucking time don't yeah. be looking in your fucking wearing mirrors because you're going too fast anyway. <laughs> right and, it, and they were just following you exactly and just everything just synced up just seemed to just land out how it should have landed out but it was in that time it was like oh fuck me they said fuck all and you just guided them through like look Back up fucking such and such there. You've got this coming up next. And fucking don't be worrying about that. How much time have you left on that? Yeah, fucking loads. That's interesting. And it was, yeah. it was just... It was, it was as a study to watch in action. These two who knew your terminology, but you were guiding them through it. Well, you won, you quite literally had your... I do, actually. Hand. I've spent a lot of time training people on... You've had your, you had your foot out the fucking door. Because you were like, I have something else to be doing out here. Flat out. Yeah. Like, I'm up to on air at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you probably were on air. Yeah, but you were filling them in what to fucking do. But it was unreal to see. All right. You think of radio and you think, talkie, 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 talkie. And mostly what you were getting them to do was to hammer out music ads. And there was promotional stuff to be done as well through Bank of Ireland or something like it was probably. being done at the time. Like, And they were fucking struggling. I don't know, was it a new desk for them or was it a new time slot or what? Yeah. But it was it was very fucking interesting That's to funny. see. It. I have no yeah. recollection. I do enjoy. I get. A, I, I do enjoy uh, coaching or training new talent. Yeah. Because I do, and it's funny you use the metaphor of driving a car because mm. that's the same metaphor or analogy I use. Because the the, the the first um, block, if you want to be on live radio, yeah, is um, the, the console, the desk. Yes. Because it's very intimidating looking, mm. but it's yeah, yeah. it's. They're Fisher Price. Most people that work in radio don't understand what how it works or what happens. They just know that if they put the channel up, yeah, it's the same thing. The mic driving. is on. Same thing with people driving. Cars. So <laughs> you know. So I say, um, you know, when you learn, do you drive? And they say, yeah. And I say, okay, you drive stick shift, yeah. So when you learn how to drive, you have to put your foot in the clutch and put it into first gear, and then you've got to get the balance between the clutch and the accelerator whilst looking around to make sure nothing is around you and the balance has to be just right otherwise the car will jolt forward and then as you proceed you've got to check your surroundings nothing's coming then you remember when the revs go too high you've got to go from first, first to, second. to second but the balance thing doesn't work the same now because you're moving and you still have to look around under, or when you're in fourth gear and you have to slow down you have to remember go from fourth to second and there's so much shit to think about when you're driving mm. if you try to explain it to someone they'll be like oh fuck I can never do that yeah 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 but yeah. then uh, when you're 17 whenever you start learning to drive you know, a month, two months into driving, you don't, you're driving. Yeah. And you're, you don't remember the last 15 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then if someone slams on the brakes, you immediately just go from four to second straight away and you slow the car down. You don't even fucking think about yeah. it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So when you get to that point in radio where the desk isn't, it's not a thought anymore. Yeah. I don't think about any of that stuff. I know off by heart where everything is. You know, if, we moved buildings and studios recently. It took me a week to get used to, oh, shit's moved around again. You know okay, I mean? yeah, yeah. This is almost like driving on the other side of the road. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah. So uh, once you get over that, 
And then you have to, sort of, you know, because you also have to think about what you're saying on the air. Of course, yeah. Well. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was saying. So many people, if you listen to any music radio station, they never fucking say anything. Yeah. That's you know, the thing that blew my mind, is that... Oh, nothing right, is said. There's fuck all being said here. But what's the difference between a social influencer on their Snapchat story saying like, oh, nothing like a busy feed coffee to start a Thursday morning <laughs> to someone on the air saying, yeah. your chance to win a hundred euro veg for Dundrum Town Centre because Shop and Rock is happening on the 9th of November. It just kicks out your Christmas. What's the fucking yeah, difference? There's no fucking difference. Really, yeah. apart from you have security of a company and a job, and you know Tesco have paid fifteen it's grand to be on the show. Possibly a bit of an Irishy thing too, because we don't. We're Ira would just fucking cut that shit out. Yeah, you know it's yeah. like cut that shit. Nobody be fucking interested in that kind of shit. Yeah, but it's if you can leave, if you can be shameless about it and just go, ah, oh, fuck. But I mean, it's, it is what it is. You know, it's the right people will find it interesting. Like that's the thing about it. Like they don't have to follow you. It's not no. an ad on the telly between your favorite program. It, they don't have to. No, see they your don't. Shit. So I suppose in that way, it's less offensive than a big dirty great fucking ad. I think that my only issue with all of it, and I don't say like there are great talents in radio, but I, I've always thought it was too easy to get on the air. I know it's a terrible thing to say. I just I always thought it's too fucking achievable to get on the air. Where like I watched um, Neil Patrick Harris. Oh I watched yeah. his monologue from the 2013 Tony Awards. Right. The Tony Awards are the Broadway the, the, Musical yeah. Theatre Awards. Now, I'm not a Broadway kid. Right. Uh, I only got into musicals because of, I go to vocal coaching. All and right. Sinead loves fucking musical theatre. And she has me doing these exams. I'm studying for London College of Music really exams. coming down the panto with me. <laughs> yeah, so. you know? <laughs> so I'm doing these London College of Music exams. They're coming up in December. And uh, it's absolutely petrifying, right? Because I have to perform in front of these, these, I don't know, judges or fucking examiners, whatever you call them. Oh yeah, pieces from 1930s musicals. Yeah, which I'm not good at. I'm not a Billy Burke, I'm, but I'm doing it because it's fucking petrifying and it's way. Oh, it's good for the system, but though. it's way left a field of what I should be doing. Yeah. Uh, so I've you know sort of looking at musical theatre and watching it. And Neil Patrick Harris did a monologue at the 2013 Tony Awards where he came out. And had a completely choreographed song yeah. with comedy, with jokes, with choreographed dancing, with him singing live. Is he a good singer? Unbelievable. Right. Really fucking good. And it went, went through all the different musicals and had a quip on each different oh, like fuck you know, People in the crowd at the awards who are obviously professionals were losing their fucking minds. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. And he got a standing ovation after his monologue. It's worth looking up. If you type I definitely in, will. Neil yeah. Patrick Harris, Tony Ward. So I'm, I was looking at that and it was a sort of... Um, it's what I've been thinking. When does when is, does that shit come back around? I watched Forty Second Street, starring Fred Astaire, which yeah. is a, a musical from nineteen thirty six, I think. And yeah. All the shots are fucking. Everyone is so talented and amazing, and there's chorus girls, and they're all doing this amazing routine. They're great actors and performers. That's all fucking gone now. It is and it isn't. And it, it started with isn't. the Kardashians almost, like, who are on television for doing... But see, there's always been mouth nothing. breathers. And they just have an outlet now. I'm mouth telling, breathers? I, I yeah, mouth breathers. Tick cunts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, but that, like, there's, nothing to be, there's nothing to be garnered from looking at the, from the, the, at the Kardashians. There's nothing. I, I've seen there's one nothing. episode of it and I'm not saying that to be cool. Yeah. I've seen one episode. No, no, you're not cool for... And I don't... Yeah, it's... It, 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 there's nothing like for anybody with any actual fucking you know capacity to actually retain stuff and enjoy stuff and take proper you know to be with some bit of fucking level of culture they'll find nothing in the Kardashians they'll go oh I see that that's just grey matter that's nothing yeah, yeah. but for people who don't have the capacity for for the want of a better fucking phrase the arts and stuff like that they'll see that and go that, that's made for me because that's on the surface stuff there's no depth to that shit whatsoever there isn't. I also, that's exactly what I want there was a study done that uh, intelligent people consume right that kind of shit to switch off I suppose maybe it's make, it's probably a superiority complex we're probably we idiots go, because we don't watch it yeah but then you see this, pseudo artists see, yeah <laughs> pseudo nonsense pseudo but see then you you would think that they they the, art, the arts and theatre are dead and all the rest of it. Uh, got, they're, they're not, I know. Well, I, yeah. I got to see it last year um, and I'm back again this year doing the UCH Panto down in Limerick, right? Yeah. Now, I haven't a fucking note in my head but because they like my comedic qualities, yeah. they went, we'll just have you miming, Tom. I said, fantastic. It was myself and Carol Spain but to watch these people, we had no idea what to expect, right? But to see these pros come in from Broadway, the West End, yeah. one of the lads had flown in from Korea. Yeah. Like, 
the dancers who had been world, not the world champions in the dancers, right? It was phenomenal. Yeah. Like, it was just, there were six world fucking champions. All these unbelievable pros. And you're going, okay, so you stick these all together. But how, will you be able to play to 20, 20 odd thousand people over, over three weeks? Yeah. Will it come off? Then you see who the pros are in the lighting and the tech. Oh, it's unbelievable. Because all I was imagine was kids losing their fucking bananas to the whole thing and ruining it. Yeah. Because there's because I was thinking from a stand up point of view, there's nothing worse like one person can fuck up an entire room. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, nah, kids behaved exactly as they were supposed to because the lighting, the sound, the stage was set up, the way the the actual choreograph, everything was ru- and the, the kids screamed when they were supposed to scream. Yeah. They didn't. It's an hour and a half fucking show, like very good director I would imagine yeah. phenomenal yeah. like it was all and it was like alright so this is what pure quality looks like so like I mean we were fucking bluffing it but yeah. it was great for us because we were like oh, it, if anything it helped me because it made me more I suppose probably fucking theatrical now on stage like with fucking my facial expressions and stuff well, like that well that's very like, important it, it was, is there's a guy called Christian O'Connell who works in radio I don't actually he's the people rate him I don't really listen to the show and he did a, a conference. He's on Absolute Radio in the UK. Yeah, I, was, I remember he was... Which he, are somewhat revolutionary in terms of he does his show and he really uses... Does he film it live? He, he does a yeah. lot. He's, I was going to say, we were talking about technology. He's yes. a person who's into developing or using technology to yeah. take advantage. So there's a, every radio station has a, has a play out system. Yeah. So when I train people, I describe it as, hey man, this is just fucking a list of iTunes. And there's the song. And this next one, rather than being a song, is a... 2FM you right, know, but that's yeah, its yeah, own yeah, yeah. thing so uh, we use one called Selector and you can have four selectors running at one time okay Christian O'Connell does this so he does a breakfast show on four different versions so there's four versions of a show if okay you, if you like 1980s music and Christian O'Connell no way you can hear 80s music and he'll come in so he won't reference the songs, but you'll hear two 80s songs and he'll come in. Or if you like 90s or pop music. Holy shit. You know, so that's using technology and the, the computer yeah, yeah, times yeah. out the songs to be the same length and he comes on. So you're getting his shtick with the music wow. that you like. So he, you know, it's pretty impressive. So he made a point uh, at a radio conference that all on air, and I, I agree with him on this, on air personalities, maybe not so much DJs, probably anyone on air should do... Uh, like an open mic night yeah because yeah, yeah. storytelling is a massive important a massively important part of if you're doing personality radio not this what I, you're not this short sort of yeah, wishy-washy washy look, look at any of the, any of the strongest um, chat show hosts in America oh, every yeah. one of them are stand-ups yeah absolutely I think you've got to do more than just, oh absolutely what? I knew I knew going into this because I said, this is going to, if nothing else, I'm going to get a new 10 minutes out of this. Oh, movie. you are. You've and they're paying what? Yeah. to do it. Yeah. But not only that, I sold out my Limerick show that I put on because it was on a Limerick, you know. But it absolutely, it didn't change me radically, but it definitely added another layer. Oh, it did. 100%. Because I find myself, because even herself, she wouldn't come to every gig like fucking hell. She just, yeah. But she even saw it and I was, she hadn't seen me in about fucking three months. She went, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now it wasn't over the top. Hello, darling. No, I like know. That. Yeah. But when a, when a punch was landed, it was absolutely landed with fucking gusto, like, and it was because I got to see these people for five weeks of training and fucking and. But anything like that's going to add to you. That was his Christian's point was the if you you should do an open mic night because telling a story on the air is one thing, and telling a story in front of an audience where you can see their eyes, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is an, another thing. It's only going like um, uh, Dermot Whelan, who works on Today FM, yeah. is an exceptionally talented storyteller because yeah. he has done more than just radio. You know, that's stand up. Oh, absolutely, stand up and improv. Like because you, your fear is that you lose them. Oh, of course. There's, like they may when you've no direct feedback that the there is a mic and maybe a, a co-host sitting across the way who'd smile at you anyway because they're, yeah. they're in the same fucking boat. Yeah. But if it's dying a fucking death, they're just gonna stay smiling. If it dies a death here in the international comedy club, people are gonna look at you like, what the fuck's going on? Or it's just gonna be like this. Yeah, that horror show. Yeah, that silence. That silence. But that's all, that's a radio or podcast, and like we people might have tapped out of this podcast already. You don't fucking have any measurement, no, of how many people are still listening or how many people are tapping out because you're shit or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, there's a new guy that came into radio recently who yeah, he's got potential to be good. He's got he's got a good voice and all that kind of right. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I, they're called air checks. I get sent audio a lot, and they listen to this, and let me know what you think of this, and. For the first time, I heard him try and tell a story. 
Oh, Jesus. And it was fucking appalling. Oh, no. But I'm glad it was. Yeah. Because he will he, he listen back to that. I, it was something really silly like... Uh, Halloween is over and it's the 1st of November now and I was in town and I see the Christmas trees in Brown Thomas. I can't believe this. Like, why are Christmas trees up? Are you going to put yours up? Text me and let me know. And it was something that simple but he fucking bailed halfway through himself. Even, even as you were telling that there. But now. he wasn't yeah. confident in it. I get you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And even though it was something simple but for him, I know the panic of being on and something going Pets. wrong. Yeah, but yeah. on radio you can hit the button that fires the next item on the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ninety percent sure on radio. I do drive time show, so I'm. It's a more. It's a slightly more personality based show, thankfully. But it want to be with a name like the Big Ride Home. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm mostly sure that in between two songs, I could go on the air and make sounds that sound like a person talking. <laughs> and because I think people are driving in their car, and if a song ends, you know. Going back to the corner, crossing the cap in my sleeping bag, not gonna move. I find one. They were looking there, coming up at eight. And I've been in a roundabout for it. 98 FM. If I did that on the radio and went into another song, I, th- I think 80% of people wouldn't. They wouldn't know. Because they just hear what they yeah, feel like radio should yeah, sound yeah. like, you know? Yeah. That's what radio sounds like. <laughs> Rather than fucking using it yeah. to actually. The best way, a lot of radio folks are afraid of silences. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite things to do on radio. Oh, we have six or seven seconds before the backup mountain tape kicks in. Yeah. If the station burns down and we all die, the script start playing from the fucking mountain. You know, that kind of right. way. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I will often push that as close. Like for five seconds of dead air. Are you like that? It's a uh, long are time. you like that movie Flatliners? Like you just want to take See how long you can do it. So I don't... Uh, so I, that's a better way to get someone's attention. Oh, like you would. And I, it took me about five years to learn that in stand-up life. It's, it must be a, a similar thing. I fucking, by the way, love stand-up comedy. I'm eternally interested in Are you in coming out comedy. tonight? I'm in Chapman's Comedy Club tonight. Where's that now? It's uh, just a... I'm not going tonight, tradition. actually. I'm not going to your gig tonight. Why, what's that tonight? Don't you know my cousin Alex has graduated from Trinity College and my grandmother's having a get-together for him? I'd heard. I'd heard, but I didn't know if you were going to stay all evening. No, yeah, a lot of people are going to be there. <laughs> okay, I understand. That. Auntie Fidam will probably be there. Class? Probably Auntie Tracy. Is it a big proud thing that to finish with Trinity like this? Uh, years like? Is he... He's the only... Yeah, he's the only one on that side of the family that went to Trinity College I think right did you do college I did yeah I did be- you finish it yeah I became a civil engineer did you yeah where did you do that I did it down in Limerick but then I, I got offered a job because the boom was starting to rip at that stage like it was really starting to go like yeah. 2002 oh 2003, yeah 2003 yeah. the fucking money was we were getting thrown jobs yeah. while in college like so I would move to Cork and finish my degree by night um, because there was so much work so much fucking work oh wow and it was like get out to fucking start earning like wow. it was college was grand and all the rest but we were all like and we dicked about, but we went, I went to an IT. So there's kind of an element around an IT where there's less crustiness. You're definitely going there almost with a trade mind in you. In, yeah. You're going there going, I'm, I'm off to make some fucking money. Like. Yeah. So What's the IT in Limerick called? It, LIT. LIT. Yeah. And then I went to see IT to finish the degree like, yeah. by night. But it was, it was definitely like, well, the crack was being had and all the rest of it. Almost everybody you could tell was there to make money when they out the fucking door and make money. Yeah. There was very little... You know, like eternal students. Yeah, people like were in. people in Trinity doing English and history. Yeah, there was no fucking around. You were going straight to fucking get a job that would yeah. make you money. Like, and then I went straight into the buildings down in Cork. Like. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was. Uh, were you doing comedy at this point? No, I didn't start comedy until I the arson fell out of the country, really, and I started working as an insurance loss adjuster. Oh, Jesus Christ. But really, I was, what I was was their engineer at first. I was going out to just survey it, ba- dim, ba- damage yeah, buildings. Because yeah, yeah. in fairness, they had it all on the textbook, but none of them knew fuck all about what they were looking yeah, at. Of like, so I doubt. But then it slowly started to morph into me actually handling claims and stuff. And I wanted to fucking burn the building to the ground yeah. that I worked in. Like. Yeah, yeah. And I'd taken up stand up off the back of a woman that I worked with. The only sound, really sound one I worked with that. Um, no, there was maybe one or two others, but. Because you're like, you have to tell them stories, them yeah. fucking stories. Because you used to tell her stories to brighten her day. Like. So f- funny how that shit is so important. That's the only reason I work on radio is because somebody told me I was good at it. Yeah. Oh, no, I wouldn't have. I loved stand-up. I had always loved stand-up. Yeah. And I actually had gone through a fortunate period of, I was working. I, this is where it gets fucking very weird. It's like she could see into my fucking mind. I'd gone, when the buildings were going good, I was gone. I had to drive a full week with the vehicle and I was putting up 
fucking 1500 1600 kilometers a week like up Jesus and down the country Christ. because at that stage i moved into building golf courses Work, more money. working out of cork working out of cork yeah. uh, but they had me all over the country like okay. but i was uh i was driving a toyota hilux for a week that had no no radio and for the entire week i was just singing songs and talking to myself <laughs> and we're talking about fucking you're driving kerry yeah to fucking cavan yeah by your fucking self in a jeep like that's, pe- that's yeah. rattling the whole way up the road like. yeah so you're just I just started telling myself jokes and going how did they get how did they get what is is there a lot of times and stuff like that I wonder and I just quite literally started making observational jokes to myself now at this time were the likes of Joe Rogan or Norm Macdonald or uh, like Bill Burr doing these podcasts and no, YouTube I, I shorts. Knew nothing about that stuff. Okay. Nothing about that kind okay. of thing. I wasn't using. I was not using my phone to that case. Yeah, so you don't no, have a basis. No, that sort of. I was used quite literally using my phone for as a phone. Yeah. That's all I was. I had no fucking. <laughs> I, been, yeah, God no, forbid. God forbid. It's been what, a long time. Wrong with you, weirdo? Phone like, to it phone. Was, it was that was clearly it, and then I went. Um, then I the arse fell out of everything, and I went working for this company and she had come into me and then she tricked me into my first open mic no and then way. but it wasn't in fairness to the lads what they, did she do she a surveyor no she, I, she'd done an insurance degree or something yeah and she was in the company as well but she'd she'd had a shitty day she got fucking reefed out of by a boss and I told her this story about I think it was just it was actually it was a true story from lunchtime about this guy with a ridiculously high pitched voice that was making kitsu noodles yeah <laughs> I, 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 it was in down the local centre but the guy's voice was joke level like, yeah, yeah, and I thought he was taking yeah. a piss out of me yeah. and I how he, he started offering me which different types of noodles I want and the lisp as well yeah. so he was like kid your noodles <laughs> and we thought do you want, do you want ducks here <laughs> and I thought and I told her and I just went I hammered it I went really hard at this story and she laughed so hard she split a blood vessel in her nose <laughs> and we had to take her straight to the hospital and get it cauterised <laughs> that's a good so yeah, it, and after the, why did you start and stand up? Well, I made this woman bleed with one of my jokes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, quite literally. And then, yeah, and then I, I ended up a couple of weeks later. The lads put me on. They went, "Look, if you if you're thinking about it, we don't want to fuck you on there. If you're thinking about it." And then a week later, I was quite literally on a stage where I'd agreed to fucking drunkenly fucking with one of the lads to fucking do it, and it was in a soccer club, and then it went all right. Yeah, but I almost I would have shot myself in the leg to get out of it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, but then my, I have this problem where five year old Tom is at the back of my brain going, "Stop being a fucking pussy! Stop being a fucking pussy!" Yeah. So I have these levels of anxiety where I, I go because uh, I was talking like to that chap Gordon Rochford. He was talking about le- levels of anxiety and why it's easier to do all his stuff from home and everything because he doesn't have to meet people. He goes, "But well, you're different." He says, "You can. You have no fucking shame. You'll walk straight up to somebody and you're only one handshake away from the million dollar handshake." Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went, "Do you do realize that I'm fully conscious that I, my brain does not want me to do that?" Yeah. But the five year old me has a stick and he's going, "Gun, you fake. Come on, come on, you fucker. Come on. Don't be a fucking pussy. Yeah. Don't be a fucking pussy." So I never, pure but ignorance doesn't want to give in to the five year old me. And that's the only reason why I come across quite confident in these scenarios. Like, and that's why I was just, that's why I did stand up. It was like, how long ago was this? Thing? Seven and a half years ago. Seven and a half years yeah. since your first gig. First gig. Yeah. And yeah, I gigged like a motherfucker then because I no, I didn't really owe any money or anything. And I just went, well, the fucking whole shit is falling apart. And I jacked in the job. It was yeah. either that or I was going to kill somebody. Like. Yeah. yeah. So I just went full throttle at it, doing open mics here in the UK, everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. I probably racked up more time than your average person would in a two-year period. I racked up probably a four years amount of gigs. Is like, there enough of a scene in Ireland? Not really, no. Okay. No, there was more at the time. I like if you were doing this in the International Comedy Club, I don't know if you mentioned that, I've come here a lot, it's great. Yeah. Those guys, like, what does it take to go from, say, open mics to yeah. getting, what's the slot here, five minutes, is it six, seven, seven minutes? Uh, you know when you come yeah, here on yeah, a Tuesday first, first slot is like 7 minutes yeah. it's a Tuesday night yeah. they have you know 4 comics on yeah 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 that would typically be 7 minutes now I mean the waters have muddied a small bit because it's strange like there's people I've met and, se- and I've seen of late like that and you're kind of going because uh, and I don't know what it's as a result of but people were a bit more humble when I started 7 years ago it's like alright oh, there is a level of hierarchy and there is places to get I wonder does social media come into play and I think it definitely know? does like there's there's 
there's people I know that like I've seen them in action they're, they're nice and everything but you're going man your standard your yeah. standard's open mic all day long like and you hear them bitching about people that are open mics coming up to them and asking them stuff it's like this fucking open mic and like dude your standard right now like if we were all electricians you would not be fucking qualified yeah do you know what I mean you're there's fucking an apprentice no yeah. fucking way you'd yeah. still be sweeping up like yeah but because it's the arts for the want of a better phrase like or a very loosely formed art you can't fucking tell people that because it's all subjective they could have yeah. rocked in their hometown yeah or they could have rocked in college and I mean the worst shit ever is in college like they, because that deadly dangerous like I yeah. remember doing I think it was Trinity or it was it was a fairly well well to do college one time and they asked me out to do a bit I went yeah yeah and it had been all like comedy sock people that were up and it was some of the most overinflated egos I've ever and say it did not match as this what was it in was it Rocky or something no it was your mouth's writing checks your body can't cash oh, it was yeah, like yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. it was it was like these strutting doing the fucking the Vince McMahon Billy walk up to the fucking stage going yeah yeah. anyway yeah. and you're like are you fucking joking me and yeah. running way over this was the thing when I started if you, they say five minutes expect the mic to be fucking turned off yeah, after at five, five minutes, minutes two seconds if you haven't fucked and if you're dying get the fuck because it ain't because that was the way it was in the UK then you because you go over to the UK like the likes of the stand in Scotland which is a legendary club yeah and by fuck if you ran over you will never see the light of day there again but apparently it's rampant now everywhere just egos are through the fucking roof but, would, going, but, but do you ever go like I feel I've when I was starting the band, yeah, I was like, I need to get out from the people all yeah. the time. So they have open mics. It's funny enough, when I, I I did open mics for God, ages, just without promoting it. Yeah, I was saying I just took sing in, in front of people. Yeah, you do three or four songs, the same as a comedy open mic. Sometimes one song. Don't you throw it on the bar here in town? You know, anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. They they have them. In fairness, if you want to sing in Dublin, I did one time. I did a. Uh, a friend of mine, Alex, who plays, I was like, we're doing a little open mic tour, we do seven nights in a row of open mics. Class. And we went around, just Dublin, and surrounding, right. just doing open, like one night it was UCD, and there was like 250 people there. Wow. The other night it was uh, the Bleeding Horse to four oh, people. Street. Yeah, you know, so it yeah, just, yeah. but there is music on everywhere. And we, sometimes you get to do four songs, sometimes you get to do one song. And we managed to do it every night for seven days. Rather than just going out once a week or twice, yeah, just yeah, literally yeah. just to try. Better it. for you too, though. But just to do songs yeah, in front yeah. of people, uh, you know. But why would you go to an open mic unless you're performing? Yeah, it's it's a strange one. Like I mean, to, like if it's free in, I guess. I suppose it's not too bad. You know what I mean? If you want to throw a few quid in a bucket afterwards, judge, judged on basis how good or, good or bad it was. Yeah. But I tell you one thing, there was a like I've never been to one that I haven't. I've, d- I've done the, I've done them in California and New York for fun. Yeah, and New York is amazing because you fucking they have an open mic and you could be on after. Like I went on in um, I can't remember the name of the place. It had like four p.m. in the afternoon. Was it Pete's? No, it wasn't Pete's. And there was uh, about a hundred to one hundred and fifty people in the room. Massive Fuck venue, me. right? And there was a mixture of comedy and music, and you got to do two songs, and they recorded for you and give it to you afterwards. Jesus! And I was on after two comics who died right it was so, like I got more of a laugh saying yeah the middle of the day would be something up, yeah. about myself or being from Ireland and they didn't even find flying fuck which I think is nice yeah that you can go alright that didn't work much like if I sing a song and it's out of key mm. I listen back to them and go okay that wasn't uh, presumably it's the same but there's so many people there and I, I was like oh, are these people just fucking performing here like, who's coming to this Oh, I'm going to go do an open mic in this place at you see, five o'clock in the afternoon. Tre- you see, pe- it's trendy then, you see, in another way. Like, like yeah. open mics with comedy, you see, what the smart thing you see with open mics with comedy is like there's one at, in Whelan's. And what you'd find when you do your first ever comedy gig, because it's seen as such a monumental fucking thing, right? because almost none of your friends would be able to do it. Yeah. It's just, that's the fact of it. They just would never do it. Like, and they go, you fuck. Well, I mean, I say that, but. You probably think with the level of millennial that's coming now and the level of confidence like it's it's totally different to what I remember because yeah, yeah. all my friends came to my first ever gig and they were fucking shitting it they yeah. were all going these are all hard bastards in yeah. the construction industry going what the fuck are you doing this to us for because yeah. they were dying yeah, they're gonna I'm going, look, it. I'm fucking dying too, but I, I, my name is on the poster. Right? Yeah. I've got to do this shit. Yeah. Like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, get yeah. it done. So, yeah. Whereas, he, like, to give you an example, I came out of the Roshin Dove a couple of months back and it was Davy Riley that was with me. Um, he was opening for me that night and he knew this girl, Davy, Davy, lovely fella, but he'd be quite hip himself, you know, he'd be quite hip. Yeah. And he'd have a lot of followers that would be quite hip yeah. and cool. What's he do? He's a comedian okay. as well, but he, um, 
he was he actually run he's now after taking over the, the Tuesday and Wednesday nights here um, but he he met this girl that he knew she was like rolling a rolling yeah you know she, and she was like she was uber cool yeah you know blinking slowly like. G- gentrification of the city is what and, you yeah she was like so what were you guys doing I was like <laughs> I just, just did, did my show. I did, yeah. And he was like, Tom just did an hour and a half and they rocked it. And he was like, cool, cool, cool. Like, I just said that I just did a flower arranging class <laughs> last week. She's like, yeah, gonna get stand up and go myself, gonna write some shit, you know. As she's licking the rolly, like, I'm yeah. sticking it in her mouth, and you're like, no, trust That's me. That's funny. It has it? to yeah. work more than, than that to you. It I think you get that more across more. the board, though, with uh, performing arts. I never felt that when I was starting out. Everybody was shitting it. Shitting it bad, like. Yeah. But maybe I'm using her as a bad example, but it was, I felt that now. I know a girl in... She works for uh, Today FM. Right. I don't know her very well. I've known of her for a long time. Yeah. And she put up a thing on Instagram, like, a month ago, saying... Uh, just got through my first open mic without vomiting or something like yeah. this. And I went, Jesus Christ. I said, did you do stand-up? And she's like, yeah, I've been meaning to do an open mic for ages. So she now is evidently doing open mics. I mean, pretty in- interesting for you to talk to her. She's like, you know, 28-ish. Right. And she's starting to do comedy. Yeah. I don't know. And I, I was like, holy shit. Like, She'll be headlining in a fucking but, year. <laughs> yeah. I said, what's going on? And like, evidently just very interested in it and just took it upon herself to go out and fucking do it. And subsequently since then, she's done three or four of them. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's because- so I'd be intrigued to see what it's like. And what, in 2017 to begin yeah you see there's it's a dangerous look it's not like again like it's not even that long ago but seven years ago it was no 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 that's that's not good enough mm. and if people were able to sit now I don't know maybe it's the fact that it's me and I am who I am and I'm fucking whatever a white male I don't know but it was totally allowed to be said to me going you need to pull your fucking socks up yeah that standard is not fucking good enough here. Yeah. Take it up a notch and we talk again. That, nowadays, you can't... Nobody's saying that. It, I get the vibe. I was just no, going to say, you don't, that's the behind the curtain stuff you don't get to hear. There's no quality control. Yeah. And people are being given free reign. And that's not good for anything. No. It's it's not good for any business because everything suffers as a result of that. The shit, it, like, you go to London, man. You see the standard there. Dire. Yeah, on the whole scale, because really? nobody's been pulled up on. It. Really, nobody's. Been I thought you were going to say the opposite. You would think. Yeah, you would think, but it, I found the last. Now I'm, de- I'm there for another week, ne- the week after next, to see, and we'll see what what's what. Like, and th- now don't get me wrong, there's fucking amazing stand up stuff because but you have a huge volume of people, so, which is always going to happen. You're going to have good ones, bad ones, but it was. I just did a whole week one time, but a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it was. I couldn't get over it. It's mm. like, no, they weren't giving a fuck. You're just, just milling through the words just for the sake of it. Like, but what a good, a good example of the, and the answer to your question of who goes to open mics, it's friends of somebody's first time. I guarantee you that girl, if she oh, told anybody about it, yeah. she had 40 people with her. Yeah. Be- and that's who, it's a smart way of doing it. Yeah. If you, your club is fucking needing customers. Like the, yeah, they are brilliant. once a week. They yeah. have a headliner, headliner. Except upstairs. Yeah. Be, yeah. They have a headliner, proper headliner. Um, and then they'll have a couple of acts that are, you know, they need it stage time, but they're yeah. definitely you know, not first timers. Yeah. And then they'll have one, it's called Pop the Cherry, they'll have one person every week who, so they might be on the waiting list for six, seven months, which is right. That long. That's, and it's right that it should be that because you'll have come with your shit prepared or you should. Um, and of course, at that stage, they'll have 40 friends. Yeah, the Ireland is funny like that because there's not a lot of um, broadcasters on television or radio yeah. that come from comedy backgrounds. Like, I, I thought the it was... The UK and America are totally different then, like, yeah. Like, again, and it's a, it's another bitchy thing. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sure it's ripe in comedy like it is in fucking music. The thing about music is behind closed doors, people are nasty. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. online or... Like there's a, a big any band or act that does well. Like, oh man, that's great, it's class, well done, blah blah blah. Because I think there's a real desperation in music to be liked. You, yeah, you, you please like me. You know, uh, radio is the same, television is the same. Everybody hates everyone. Everyone's a cunt. Yeah, <laughs> I've mo- I've mostly tapped out of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, it's just, it's very energy consuming. You should be in a car ride with a bunch of comedians going across the country. Oh uh, yeah, it's so it's, it's like, the same. Everyone. Do you know who's a cunt? But I remember. Um, uh, Bernard and Jen when Bridget and Eamon went to the air for the first yeah. time 
and I was in RTE for, I thought it was I don't know Dermot had his own panel show or something did he at that time did he have a panel he, show like there was, a, was something after Republic of Telly he did oh yes yeah 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 uh, now he wasn't in the room but there were other comics around there was the warm up guy around and uh, they, I just overheard two lads fucking t- 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 sort of turn shite into uh, B- Bridget Name. Mm. and Bridget Name is a popular show yeah like, people like it and I was like yeah. oh it's, it's the fucking same comedy is the same as oh, television it's exactly. or radio or I mean you want to like, you're doing anything any, if you're doing anything yeah you're a dickhead oh yeah like well it's it's four years it's th- no it's three years since I did Dave on Ivor and it's only now people are kind of going I bet people fucking went to town what's his name on Andy At Cork is it yeah, yeah we had like, him on oh, the zoo crew one time it was they went they would have not to my face but I knew, you know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was the kind of oh thing because God. people liked it and it was on RTE and it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, colossal, colossal fucking viewing, like, and colossal popularity, like, just, yeah, just to yeah. Give you, like, sitting right behind where I am now. Yeah, I was here one night. It was Halloween about two years ago. He didn't do. He's not stand up, is he? Or? No, 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 no. Um, uh, and I was on stage here, and there was two guys dressed as my character. And oh, fucking, it was the most yeah, bizarre thing good. of all time. Yeah. Like, but that was. That showed me the level of popularity. It's like, Jesus Christ, this is an Irish home-made fucking thing. Like. I, th- I don't hate Irish television comedy. But you, you know... I, a lot it, of people... I, in, in I, I, thought, I think RTE do okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, but you know anything that's going to be made at home is going to get fucking ripped apart. Anyway. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Like, yeah, yeah, no, of course it is. Yeah, but it's just, it seems to be... The, the, I don't know if it's an international attitude, but it's right here where everyone is a dickhead if they do anything. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, which isn't yeah, going yeah. to help you along. The radio is the same. Well, you see, they're only seeing five percent of the. They're only seeing the end result. They're not looking at the fucking work you put in, no. anything like that. You know no. what I mean? Well, you would think more like uh, all the Irish. There's the same faces, yeah, as you know, B cast or whatever it's called. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, or, yeah. Um, what's it called? The company in cast. I don't know what you call it. Other people in like if you got like um, uh, Bridget Naiman. Yeah. The other characters. This is usually the same circle of comics that are in. Yeah, a lot of the time, yeah. Because you know, yeah, yeah. oh, even I was in Bridget Nathan. I don't know why a lot of these guys aren't, like... Al Porter, when he got the Today FM show... Yeah. I remember people going fucking bitching and giving out about it. I remember being at a conference. Ben Cooper... Yes, Ben Cooper. Ben Cooper, the controller, it's called the BBC Radio. Right. One. And BBC Radio 1 is like the mecca of youth radio if you're in a band or an artist, you have to get your song in the BBC Radio 1 playlist. It's the difference between being signed by a label and being dropped by a label. Like, right. It's so important. And he was over and he did this talk and I was at it. It was in the Gibson Hotel in Dublin beside Three Arena. And it was a guy that's been working in radio for a long time. Overweight kind of guy sitting at, sitting at the back. I mean, I don't think he ever got his break if there's such a thing in radio. Right, as a yeah, break. Yeah. And he put his hand up and asked the question, uh, excuse me, what do you think about uh, all these program directors now giving gigs to celebrities or uh, people that are famous getting on the radio just because they're famous when they'd have put years of work into working on the radio, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. And your man Cooper responded, going, well, we have uh, Nick Grimshaw on The Breakfast Show because, you know, things are evolving, everything is multi-platform now, you need to be able to do more than just broadcast, you know, yeah. that kind of way. And he was blatantly talking about himself not getting a gig in Dublin yeah, and Nicky yeah, yeah, Byrne yeah. getting a gig on 2FM why the fuck is Nicky Byrne getting a gig on 2FM yeah. I've been working in radio for 15 years and you know this kind of yeah, thing yeah, 10 yeah. years and I'm like well Nicky Byrne's in the biggest boy band yeah out of yeah. the country you know uh, yeah. he, people know him and, and he's good too like, Nicky Byrne good. has something that a lot of people don't have he has genuine enthusiasm for being yeah. but he's likeable too isn't he like people like him yeah. and that's all that fucking matters and Ray Darcy left Today FM their ratings plummeted because people fucking like Ray Darcy even though people go oh, he's a miserable fuck or I don't like him or he's not good it doesn't matter he's addictive like when it what comes forum to you're on or whatever what twitter page you have you are not Bridget in fucking Tipperary you know you yeah. are not uh, Liam in Roscommon these people that's the fucking audience yes yeah yeah they're the people that are important and not- that's the dangerous playing to your your well, your colleagues you're playing to the fucking people who are paying you Oh yeah, I, I, customers, like, you know I feel I mean? it's probably, it could be similar in comedy I feel like I always feel like you're doing radio for the other person that works in radio yeah. to impress them and uh-huh. like, how do they do that and the fucking random punter listening yeah that's it uh-huh. I don't feel like there's anyone else 
you want to piss off another radio presenter because they can't figure out how you've done it and you want to fucking uh, well that's just yeah that's exactly the same because it does the longer you work in media the harder it is to relate I think sometimes to people oh yeah 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 you fucking run away with yourselves there like, you, you know, know I mean? and that's why for me like especially doing gigs um, down the fucking in mad places like I'm, I love going to places like fucking Estol to do it oh, of course because yeah. you're going oh fucking right I'm with you and it's it actually it's actually quite easy because you can pick a team and it matches everybody in the room yeah here last night there was fucking Swedish people Canadians there was yeah. a handful of Dublin there was people smattered all over the place yeah so it has to be very general comedy like so sometimes but it gives you a good insight into who you're but here they could have come here or they could have gone to music across the road. Yeah, they could have, yeah. yeah. So a lot of times, to... the heavy duty commitment isn't the same as if when I was in Belfast the night before last. Yeah. Everybody there was from Northern Ireland. Yeah. And everybody had made a very conscious decision to come out on Wednesday night to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were yeah. going nowhere else. Yeah. So you had them in the fucking palm of your hand. And sometimes, like, if, you, if all you do is, is gig in Dublin, that can become quite diluted. And these lads find themselves fucking really struggling going anywhere else in the country because they're going... What's to do with all the donut shops? Yeah, I know. People, yeah, yeah, you know, some yeah. lad in fucking Carlos Alvina is going, huh? Yeah, yeah. What in, the I... fuck, what in the fuck are you talking yeah. about? You know, like, so it's not good for your... It's well, not it's good, surely, for you to alter your material. Absolutely, like, absolutely. And that uh, you have a life outside of the fucking performance. Because yeah. you're going to do stand-up, obviously, is completely alien to 99.9% of human beings. Yes. Plus, you're working at night time. Plus... It looks like you're only working for 10 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? When yeah. you're not, like, you know, yeah. like, where if you cut your finger working with the hatchet or, or whatever, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's going to relate to the fucking guy in Bound the Slow. Like, it, like you wouldn't believe... Oh, he was a hatchet! You know? I, I put up a thing yeah, last night. I have a serious mouse issue at the moment at home. Like, I can't, I can't, I'm up to 23 of the fuckers Jesus at this stage, right? And uh, I think I, I did a snap or something about it. Just go, what am I going to fucking do? Because like? yeah. I don't want to put down fucking poison with the dog around. And poison's yeah. fucking shit anyway. Yeah. Because, yeah. And I was just kind of saying it jovially. I swear to God, I had 23 fucking messages from lads this morning. Like, yeah. I know what you want to do. And then <laughs> other lads were throwing funny shit at me. Yeah, yeah. Like even, I just, I snapped that I was coming to interview Derek Wilty. Two people have asked me to ask you what was the maddest thing. To, like there was a bunch of other stuff. Actually, I thought, really, someone said that, right? Yeah, a bunch of people asked. Actually, did, uh, two I find it hard three, to believe. Three like. people asked me to ask you what's the maddest thing that's happened on air. So yeah, actually, just because they'll be listening to this podcast next Wednesday. So what's the maddest thing that happened on air? Actually, yeah, the maddest thing that happened on air is the maddest thing that actually happened off air. Okay, there's a thing that you do on radio. It's called voice tracking. Okay, where you put the radio station console into record mode. So if you I can't do it anymore because I do drive time but back when I did the zoo on spin yeah myself and Brian did it we were very close buddies like st- like to this day and when you're on spin you fall under the radar of management and importance like we had uh, we, we didn't do comedy I don't we're not I'm not a comic or anything but we did a, a segment the show was called the zoo crew yeah we did yeah, a yeah. segment on the show called the petting corner because the show was called the zoo crew but it had nothing to do with animals yeah that's a stupid name for a show so the petting corner was sort of a <laughs> a fictitious uh, kids program so oh, we had brilliant. this sort of nice little kids jingle and then we had the pitched up voices yeah saying Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the Petting Corner. And we pick an animal each week that we get up close and personal with. And all of it was really bottom-of-the-barrel sexual innuendo. Good, yeah, like um, it. I was only listening back to some of it last month, because I have a hard drive of all the audio. And it was fucking appalling, thinking that we got away with it. Like, it was... Um, Look at the horn of this guy. Oh, it was, yeah, but it was like that. Like, the, one of the punchlines was... Uh, hey, boys and girls, welcome to the Petting Corner. And because your voice is pitched up, it's funny. And it's like, today we're going to look at a dolphin. Ooh, and Brian would say something like, and dolphins live in the ocean. Swish. And you'd say, dolphins make funny noises like, eh, eh, eh. And we'll go on for too long. And then, and dolphins have a big hole on their head. What's that for? That's for your daddy's Mickey. And then the thing would end. And it would go into a song. <laughs> now that's not, it's not hilarious, but it's... it's okay, but the fact that you... But it went on the fucking air. Like... What time of the evening is the zoo crew? Is Between that... 7 and 9 p.m. Okay. For 15 to 24 year olds. You know? And that went on the air and, like, nobody complained about it <laughs> or heard it. So, like, it was... A, if we got away with... Like, it's not... Like, if you listen to that, if you heard two young lads doing that now, you'd be like, these two fucking pricks. But I was 23 doing this show, yeah, so it's fine. You were a young prick. And so, still a prick. So, the um, we were voice tracking one night 
And when you do voice tracking, the radio station goes into autopilot. Mm. So when you're listening to the show, you hear just the music. Yeah. And we're behind the air recording links. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, breaks yeah. the talky bit on the radio. So we're on the air. Um, the show's going and I have the two things in record and the microphone's up. So we can hear each other yeah. in the headphones. And we're trying to get a collar on. Okay. Because we want to get the collar on. Everything has to be done. Yes, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to describe this. Everything has to be done together. So we'll start the link. Oh, that's the song on Spin World Trade. Brian and on the Zoo Crew Hot 30. We're here. I mean, we got this competition giving away two black stools this week. A lot of text with the black stools this week. Avian on the line. Hey, Avian. Hey, lads. And that's how it would go. Yeah. So we couldn't get through to the person. So I had, because we're in record mode, I have the mics on. So you can be saying whatever you fucking want. Right. You remember the old Spin studio. You're sitting behind the desk. To your left, there's a window. Yeah. Outside of the window is the program director's office. Yes. So you can see this visual between you and the program director. Right. Oh. Who's not your producer, but you're just there. Yeah. So I have the mics up and I'm leaning over like this and I'm calling a, a number and, and Brian is, is up to the microphone saying appalling language that you can't, I couldn't say it now, but just like bad stuff. Good, yeah. Like, yeah, nice. like not fucking cunt, like defamatory slurs okay right bad right, stuff actually, okay. just to me because we yeah. would say stuff like that just, just get it out of the system just to be to wind each other up yeah. you know what I mean like and he was saying like things that would get you in trouble okay right, right okay so I'm leaning on the car ringing the person and Brian's saying bad things bad things <laughs> And in my peripheral vision, I see Shona Ryan, who was a program director, standing in her office with her arms out side by side, like, what's going on? And another guy in her office looking, just looking. And she's like, what the fuck's going on through the glass? Oh, Jesus. And I just took the mics down. And I thought what we were saying, because it can often happen oh, if you don't me. do it right. What we were saying is going out over what's going on in the air. Oh, fuck. I wish I could repeat it. I don't want to repeat it, but it was... It was vile anyway. Right. Did you get that? Yeah, yeah. That word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was stuff like that. Yeah. Like, used badly. And I just put the mics down. And I looked at Brian and I literally said, man, I think that was going out of the air. And he went, what? And I thought I'd he ruined hear, his he, career. Yeah, you can hear P45. I thought it was... Ru- and not only yeah, that, you yeah. wouldn't fucking work again. Yeah. And it turned out what happened was... So I had a minute of going, oh... I sat back and was like, that's it, it's over. Everything is over now. Ball, ball burst, we're all going Such home. bad stuff we were saying. <laughs> and it turned out I didn't put it in auto mode. So one song had oh, ended. Fuck. The station went to dead air. Oh, so that's what she was rearing up yeah. about. So okay. the station went off the air. Oh, right, right, right. But when you're in record mode, you can't hear it, so you don't know. So I thought she was hearing what Brian and I were saying. Oh, to each other. Jesus Christ. Okay. My heart went from fucking the chest right down to the fucking feet. I thought that was it. Like, it's such a fucking fright. Oh, my good A Jesus. really bad fright. Like, or, yeah, that was, that, was, that, was, that was the biggest fright I've ever got on the radio. I've done stupid. I've cursed on the radio. I've said fuck on the radio and things like that. Fine. But that moment, I thought, just because the stuff we were saying, like, it's kind of like those two guys from FIFA who got done yeah. for yeah, 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 yeah. you know the defamatory comments against women or something like yeah. that you know that kind of way when you know they're uh, it must be having the crack but now you can't do that anymore oh, and there's no talking your way out of that no no there isn't no there isn't no. There's, like it's evolving but contrary to that I think it's interesting that Donald Trump has become the president because I would be very worried about WhatsApp groups yeah are oh, you in Jesus WhatsApp groups Christ. I had to back out of one dude so there's a lot of stuff in WhatsApp groups being said there's nothing illegal is going on but it's a lot of fucking bad jokes you know it's just bad taste which is fine in a group of six lads who and being Irish they're having a laugh and they all know but out of the context of a WhatsApp group if you took it to court yeah and they said on May 19th you said and I quote you devoured the pussy off that bitch and if you said that out of context, people. Oh, yeah. oh God, Tom, he's awful. Yeah. He's awful. But no, it's out of the fucking context, Tom. But that's that's the thing I talk about too. Like we all like there's there, it, when in different in different formats, we almost pretend that we don't do that kind of stuff. Even here last night, I was trying out some new stuff, and I was talking about there should be more swear words in like official documents. Like, yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you need to take it more seriously yeah. if like the bank is called want to fuck yeah. and pay us back. You know, because we all pretend we don't swear. We're fucking but repealing we, the Eighth Amendment, and well, that that's, that's fucking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, come on, to fuck yeah, yeah. Like you know, it, but it's almost that we pretend we all go all of a sudden we turn into fucking highs and bouquet. No, everyone when it does. Comes to 
like almost different environments but we'll sit down here and that's what I love about podcasts is that you can actually just fucking say whatever you want you can and there's a reality to it but like there is almost nobody who heard you say fuck that night on the radio that went I've never heard that word before no. I've never used that word myself yeah. I've yeah. never because the, but yet there'll be still somebody complain who probably uses the word fuck but that's what I'm saying about Donald Trump day. Donald Trump said when you're famous it's great. You got the power. Oh, beautiful women. You can do whatever you want. You can uh-huh. kiss him. You can grab him by the pussy. Yeah. That was leaked. He said that out loud. Mm-hmm. And he was still... I know he didn't get the popular vote, but he still is the president. Doesn't matter. You know? And he got like... And he was voted president in the year. All that shit came out now. He's elected. Fucking Harvey Weinstein. Kevin, Kevin Spacey. Spacey. Yeah. But I, all that... Listen... Bill Bird used to joke about joke, joked about this about three years ago about Paula Dean when she'd come out with this she was like chef she was a famous enough chef in America and she was all like wholesome cooking oh, and yeah. making cookies and she was her overheard saying because she comes from a plantation family like and she over, was overheard saying wouldn't it be great to throw a party like the old days you know what I mean where you have just black guys serving you with white gloves and all, you know and it was all it was blown up like it just exploded and he's look it doesn't matter doesn't matter what she says there's too much money involved in her as a product and he was saying like she's a whale like in in, not in casino terms she's worth a hundred million dollars a year to as to a uh, TV to the, channel to company she'll yeah. go away for six months fall out of, and they'll just all they'll do is fabricate something else to take people's eye off her yeah. next thing she'll be back he's Dog the Bounty Hunter came out with all that racist shit on that phone call one time and people were surprised like a guy with a mullet down to his arse <laughs> you know what I mean came yeah, out with yeah, yeah, racist yeah, yeah. stuff he has a show back again because his show is worth 80 million dollars a fucking year he said there should be a cha- and he said it there should be a channel you know for the the fuck ups oh yeah for just the, actually yeah. let them have their own channel yeah. like the bowl boy corner like, yeah. send him away for a year or two Weinstein is the very same he's probably in a fucking clinic for sex addiction right yeah. now that'll clear him in any fucking court of law yeah. he'd be fine he worth a billion fucking dollars but in fairness that is uh, the, the, the sexual harassment thing is very interesting because uh, you and I will never fucking understand a, a, a woman or I, I don't know what it's like in, in <laughs> you and I will never understand women I like that. Just and on that, that note, and on that note, thanks very much, Derek. <laughs> uh, uh, I see it in fucking media, just the women struggling. Yeah, because they're women. Now it's the, and I don't mean like women on air or any of this fucking yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, I, I would like to believe that fucking women aren't discriminated against because they're women. Much like a woman isn't going to want to be on a fucking comedy bill because the comedy bill says, "Oh, we better put a woman on." Whatever. I presume a woman isn't going to want to... A woman's going to want to be on the bill because she's, she's fucking funny. I would imagine herself. Yeah, I like I Joanne, Joanne McNally on a couple of weeks ago. She was saying exactly she's great. that. She went, I don't... Now she goes, don't get me wrong. I know there was a void in the market when I came on. Yeah. And I and I probably got to where... But I, she says, I was... You know, I was... I, I was needed at the time. Like, but she says, I certainly now would not want to be on a bit like the same way Garode Farley said to me when he started off because I can tell you here now he did a, did a podcast and he said I can tell you here now when I started doing comedy like 12, 13 years ago I know I got jumped three years easily got jumped up three years because of the gay thing interesting oh he says I did he says, interesting there was a gap in the market for it and people yeah. wanted to be more open minded and there was a calling for it not aggressively like, like about two years ago there was an aggressive calling yeah. from certain groups and certain individuals with power in the media yeah. for more females to be in comedy which was kind of wrong or right I whatever See, it's hard, it is hard it is hard but there's definitely my point is there's definitely a struggle uh, with men in power and women looking for gigs yeah because like the, 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 the reality is that like like you and I are meeting here in this bar we're just mm. two lads shooting the shit however if this was a big fucking massive podcast with 12 yeah. million downloads. You're going to have people that are going to come to you and be like, I need to promote my book. I need to be on this. And then you have the fucking power. Yeah. And then you yeah, all yeah, of a yeah. sudden, uh, you fancy this one and you're only having her on the fucking podcast because you fucking want to get into her pants. I you know, it's because yeah, you don't yeah, give yeah, a shit yeah. about her fucking book. And she probably knows that. And like, she's like, oh, I'm only getting on this now because he, you know that kind of way. So this, there, you, there, yeah. it, there is misconduct, I think. So with well, Harvey Weinstein like that's fucking appalling that's fucking scandalous like, I could never like look, don't get me wrong I, I'm i not the most fucking confident person with women anyway you know in that kind of way it wouldn't be a fucking hell you get getting on like but saying oh yeah you can come in on my show no worries I'll train you in on the radio you have to suck my dick 
I mean, that to me is fucking crazy, Gary. I, I don't know. Fucking I, I think it's, crazy, a lot of it has Carrie to do with people's rearing too. Like, because I came from a rural place, but by, I swear to God, my mother would break your fucking jaw. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? She was that kind of, and there's, I have nothing but, like, for me, it's straight down the line, 50 50. Yeah. It's women and men. I don't even fucking give a fuck about gender. If you can do it, it's all about fucking meritocracy. If you can do the job uh, yeah, well, that's, I it. Would that's agree. where it fucking ends. But we see, we, I don't think, and I would appreciate the fact that, like, like, with, gay men in Ireland maybe specifically or women there are there there is a struggle with some people that you don't understand and there's also a struggle with fucking straight men that other people don't understand yeah. as yeah, well yeah. you know what I mean because I think a lot of people in media romanticize things at the moment it's sexual harassment is coming mm. out now and I, I it's slightly irritating that people the same women that suffered from anxiety two years ago in the newspapers yeah, yeah. Now also have been sexually harassed in the newspapers. Yeah. And I read a very good article from the Huffington Post. I was on depression and anxiety. And it was a, a woman who suffers from depression who wrote an article and it was called the Romanticizing Fucking Blackness or something. Right. Else. And the point was, we really appreciate you coming forward and creating a discussion. Yes. For mental health. It was in the United States. This is, this is good. However, please understand that if you're a fucking model and you come out saying, I suffer with anxiety disorder. And it's really bad, guys. And everyone goes, oh, guys, yeah, guys. Yeah. Oh, please. Oh, no. And it's, okay, you're okay, blah, blah, blah. And you go to the gym three times a week. And the gym has helped your anxiety disorder. And healthy eating has helped your anxiety, anxiety disorder or depression. Those things are relevant to curing the head. Health yeah. and fitness, absolutely. However, if you are clinically depressed... I don't know if you suffered from depression. I don't, thankfully. Mm -hmm. If you are depressed, you will wake up on a Tuesday morning with nothing on that day. Nothing's on. Yeah. You might have to go to work. You might have the week off. And everything is shit, dark and black and nothing is fucking important and you feel like a piece of shit. Going to the gym, it, it will help. Exercise is really important, but yeah. it's not the fucking solution to yes. the problem. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that kind of way? So yeah. there's a difference between suffering from depression or suffering from anxiety there's a difference between experiencing depression mm. and experiencing we all get depressed over yeah. things we all get anxious over things which are normal however mm. that fucking idle Tuesday when nothing on when you wake up feeling fucking like a piece of shit that's when it's a real fucking problem yeah so yeah so what should so it's we say romant it's, it's yeah. a romantic it's a don't uh, like it, it, he, because like I mentioned Brezzy at the start of this I know Brez and I know he has genuine he suffers from his things nothing all these people don't <coughs> but there are people who sort of capitalize on things yeah of course but then I suppose on the other side Blind Boy said it on his fucking podcast he came out with a big talking about anxiety yeah and he got a lot of feedback going ah yeah another fucking this is the guy from the rubber bandits another fucking person going on about anxiety and he's yeah. like that's not the fucking response here you know that's not you can't just say ah yeah whatever because so that because so many people said oh, yeah, I have anxiety but you don't have anxiety you were anxious for a little bit because something happened yeah absolutely like I mean there has to be an element too of like um, you need to fucking realise that some of this stuff is normal oh you know I mean? 100%. you'd be a fucking psychopath if you were walking yeah. around going I'm a fucking legend I'd, every lo I'd love to be a psychopath I'd say every waking moment great, of the yeah. day if you woke up you're like, I'm a fucking legend <laughs> then that you need you probably need as much fucking help but so there are like you couldn't you couldn't fucking sustain but don't over fucking gussy up the situation either, I think right? some people I think some people do that and I think it takes away from like like with sexual harassment going on now or rape that's going on like that's coming people are coming forward which is much needed because it's one of the most heinous fucking things that yeah. exists in humanity is that it's great for people that ha have suffered in silence yeah. for a long time and it's great to create awareness hey man you can't fucking behave like this it was yeah. Chris D'Elia the podcast I listened to uh, Chris D'Elia American comic congratulations and he was talking about Harvey Weinstein and he was like sex is supposed to be hard it's supposed to be a fucking challenge. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to be something you fucking work for and you really want to do. It's not supposed to be something you just fucking turn it on and just Absolutely. fucking happens. Yeah, you yeah. know that kind of way? Like, yeah. it's supposed to be like this. It's like, it's like wanting to get in shape and but just see, sleeping with a belt pack on and that's going to do all the work for you, you know? thing not to excuse Weinstein, but to try and maybe understand the situation of he had so much power for so long it's like a dog will keep biting you if it's lit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, nobody clipped his fucking wings at any point. Like, no fucking boyfriend stormed into his office and broke his fucking jaw. But no. You know what I mean? But isn't that interesting that when one person comes out then, like, with, about your that's man what I, that's what everybody I, That's what I can't fucking wrap my head around. It's like, 
at what point, like, I know it's a sensitive scenario, and you see, like, this is one thing I noticed with the, the Panto group. They're very much actors. They're very much actors. Yeah. Like, I'm not. Yeah. I just got lucky to get a fuck of you and the yeah. acting. <laughs> I'm a fucking lover, like, yeah. you know what I mean, at the best of times. Like, but you could see they were all absolutely going through the motions of happiness. Because at first I thought, you're all ridiculously happy all the time. Is it just because you're happy to get... No, it was the fact that they were getting good work. Yeah. But also the fact was, be unbelievably polite to everybody around you because you don't know when it's coming next. So just keep your fucking head down and keep yeah. fucking working. And you could see in that environment, and the stories I heard from past... I won't say a name on the podcast, yeah. but on past big name fucking panto stars, the fucking... The psychological abuse that they unloaded on people... Sh- she was allowed to get away with it because of the power that she had yeah, in the yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I was he- hearing this and coming from a construction background and the environment I worked in too yeah. is if you had a fucking problem on the spot with somebody, I'll take the fucking gate but I'll break your fucking jaw. Yeah, you'd have it out straight away. You'd have it out on the fucking spot. So yeah. it was a completely different environment to work yeah. in. I couldn't, I said, I said this, like how did you I sit there and take this shit from him. and it was like it's just the way it is it's just the fucking way it is Tom yeah. you just fucking have to do it I was like no I, I don't buy it I just no this me being selfish talk my point of view like but I, I'm guessing it's that was what happened with Weinstein is that people were because del- oh, he was coming through on his on his promises apparently like if he, if you did write him or whatever yeah. he was getting you a gig you in a movie the film, yeah. so of course people were going well I had to do that fucking thing you know there's worse things I could have done maybe yeah. I did get fucking I did make a half million off that movie yeah. or whatever you know and he's got the ball rolling for me yeah but I just don't know how like how did it go for so many years where somebody everybody kept going I know it's insane I, like to the point where they were joking about it in TV shows like 30 Rock and yeah. stuff like that like how did nobody go fuck but now this? you're seeing all the references now that everyone's putting on Family Guy said this last year and so on yeah, yeah. but like how did nobody fucking bust it like I know, know it's mean? insane like, but that's like I mean there was a, uh, an Irish person in the media who's being accused now I don't remember his name yeah 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 sort of various Michael something I don't know what it was this is in the papers now I only I, like that heard a clip of it on the radio yeah just, like, driving home like, you know I was like we're not a very powerful show business country no, you no, know no, but there's definitely not, no, no. ego and it's always funny because it's it's rarely it's it's it's, it's rarely women in power that the, 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 not sexual the, not sexual. rarely sexual no that's what I mean lot, a lot of the time from what I've heard psychological yeah or sheer dominance like. yeah um, I've seen that happen yeah yeah, seen, yeah. yeah. but I mean look it's, but that's people in power yeah that's people well. in power in general yeah. but I like talking with herself this it give you an idea like I've heard now for a couple of mates of mine are writers and stuff like that have worked in RTE for years and some of the stories I've heard back yeah. of at RTE secret producers and that how funny yeah, yeah 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 but it was a carry on that has gone on that Jesus Christ like I mean yeah. fucking eyes roll backwards but my mm. My wife's uh, mother was a hairdresser, a gents hairdresser back in like the 70s, yeah. uh, 60s, 70s. And it was to high end, it was fucking pricey haircuts for back in the day. Like. Yeah. And it was a lot of people from RTE and stuff like that were rocking in. Like, And these fellas, like David Boy could walk in and he wouldn't be as big a shot as these fellas. Like, they were ro- like guys were pulling up yeah. and just leaving the door of their rolls yeah. on Baggett Street. Just fucking leaving it open. And yeah. just walking out with a fucking cigar in their yeah. mouth and cut my hair, darling. And leaving like... A, like a 50 quid tip in the yeah, 70s like, yeah, yeah. and rock starring it back up to fucking Donnybrook yeah. like, and you're going those guys like yeah. those people must have had fu- like because people were it was a more innocent time too where people were like yes sir no we weren't long gone from fucking penal times like, I, I know, was just going to say the priests are the fucking that, that and the, the fucking, same thing and the, the landlords too like yes sir yeah. no sir yes sir absolutely sir like the People, these guys were walking on air. So I yeah. mean, there must be a handful because I mean, it all ties back into like the Savile and Ralph Harris and all just, these guys. These rings. I was just gonna say Savile. How no one it, ever but, but it must came have come forward. to a point where the guy was just fucking so many people, and he just wandered into the fucking the children world and went, "I can do this too because I'm that big of a legend." Yeah, and that's the idea. The psychopath. Nobody was ever. Yeah. Like as they say, like he, the guy was catching nothing but net for like thirty years. Like he was just being a rock, rock on it. That's I, like I mean I think that's always going to be there with power because it's like it's almost like the the new alpha male. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Is the person in power as opposed to the person with fucking, you know, the, like the, the the person who can beat up all the other men to ride. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. that kind of or way. So plow a field faster than the other. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it seems to be the way it is now. In other words, humans are shite. Really. Yeah. I'm just wait till the robots take over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucking happening, man. <laughs> it's fucking happening. The, do you know what? I think there's somebody coming up to practice their play here in a minute. Uh, 
Yeah. They do that here during the day, do they? They do. They, this is a performance arts area. Is uh, it? Yeah, there's a lady, I think she's performing at our place, so we better, before she rudely cuts us off here. And How long have we been in. going We've for now? We've gone over an hour and a half. Would you believe that? Fucking, do you know, Mike Sheridan was on this podcast. He was, yeah. And uh, it was long and I didn't want to do a long one. Yeah, I know. It's your fault, I blame you. This is it. I won't stop talking. I know you won't. I know you won't. And see what I'm, when we just pull up the trailer there, you just fucking pull the pin and just let you off up the track. It was, it was good to be on, Tom. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Derek Wilty. Uh, follow, you don't need any followers. You've got fucking loads of them, don't you? But anyway, I just, don't actually, but you can follow me if you want. If you've listened this far, for the love of God. Quilty. Q- yeah. Q U I L T. Quilt with a Y. Dara Quilty. It's all spelled phonetically. You'll Fantastic. put it in the about section. Yeah, I will actually put it out. I'll put all your links anyway in the about section. But thank you very, very much. Thank you, Tom. Mm-hmm.